Welcome, welcome, and once again to the Lisu Football TV. And you know, it's a Monday discussion night, and we will be discussing all things football, but merely we'll be touching obviously upon um, um, things that happened uh, during the weekend as well. And oh. yes, and I've got my guest, I've got the the the, the the, the the most important guys in the room. Uh Brasim is yeah. here. I'll let you guys exactly. introduce yourself once again, man. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh Sim Simpue, uh the full name, so since the, the nickname. So yeah. Uh nice to be here again. Uh well it's always a, a great time when we, we talk about football. So I'm expecting another, you know, uh nice uh talk about football. Yeah. And we also Jen. got another guest in the middle, uh, Mr. Gemini. He still refuses to show his face, by the way. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. you don't know Stop hiding yourself. <laughs> Stop hiding. Uh, so, yeah, man, I'm Kelso. Uh, and my surname, you, you guys know it. So, I sh- yeah, uh, man, I'm looking forward to uh, on this show. Thanks, now for having me, man. Because, man, it's been a stressful weekend, man. Especially if you're <laughs> losing on Friday, man. And then it's all your weekend. So, it's, it's, it's. Yeah, yeah, so I'm looking yeah. forward now to express myself today, man. Ish, no, man. It's, it's time to let that. This is therapy, man. This is, we call it therapy for us, man. So, no, um, actually, it is, man. Yeah. Obviously, um, obviously, I want to start off the, the, the show by congratulating Senegal. Man. Uh, Senegal, well deserved. Um, played as a team, played as a unit. Always felt that they were the, the strongest. Mm-hmm. Um, they had the strongest squad at the Afcon because they could field two separate teams and they'll still win games. Yeah, and they could Not also true. have they also had a, a team. Yeah, yeah, whereby it was like um, where they were flexible. They could be flexible formations. They could play counter attack. They could play attacking football. You know, they yeah. could also play at defensive mm-hmm. football. So. You know, those dynamics were very important throughout the whole tournament. So, yeah, man. Uh, what do you guys think yeah. about the whole Afcon tournament? Well, should I go first uh, or... The, for me, can I, I go? Let me, How yeah, you? Start, I start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I, um, yeah, no, you, are, you are right, man. <laughs> you are right. Because Senegal, man, from game one, they mm. like they showed that they want to win the Afcon. They really showed because mm. they were pressing high and they were good off the ball counter. Yeah, like man, those guys were on, they were giving hundred percent every game. So it's not like Egypt. Egypt, man, I those those guys to reach the final, I think it was luck, man. Because Senegal, every game they really deserve mm-hmm. man. Like, those guys were fighting mm. from the first whistle to the final whistle. Yeah, so I mean. And also, like man, he really deserves to win something for Senegal. Even the the coach, because that time he missed the penalty in two thousand and two, and then yeah, he couldn't win the Afcon, so he came back as a coach and led a great team. So yeah, congrats to them. At least it was in Ghana, eh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, true, because hey, you know what you talking about Ghana. <laughs> I was one of the fans. South African, you know, all the fun, all fun, fans was like, you know what, ne? screw Ghana. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's you know, true. I was one of those. So I'm actually glad that they actually got knocked out in the first round. And I'm actually yeah. happy to be congratulating Mane because I was like, I didn't want uh, Salah to win. I feel like mm. Salah is good, ne? Yeah, Salah is good. But I feel like at times people like overhyping him and then comparing him with people they should not be comparing him with. So yeah. that's why I start losing it. Obviously, we all have our favorites, but when you start uh, diverting uh, common sense and you're like, no, you compare Salah with your Messi, you compare Salah with your Cristiano, and you look at the numbers those people were putting out, uh, looking at the age that Salah is in, I'm like, nah, there should not even be a comparison. So I'm actually glad Senegal won. And Mane... Yeah. Well, like you said, Senegal had a great team. When they started the tournament, they showed they didn't really have an easy run because Cameroon 
I don't come out might have yeah. had a chance, but then looking at the teams that they played, they had an easy run to the final. Egypt, yeah. they started the tournament very poorly. I think the first game, did they lose like it was in Comoros? No, they lost against Nigeria one year. Or, or yes, Nigeria. Nigeria. Like if you look at when they yeah. started, yeah. When they started, they didn't really have a... They were not clear on what they wanted. Because looking at your Senegal, your Cameroon, you would have thought that, okay, including Cameroon, that, you know, they were showing what they wanted to do. But unlucky for Cameroon, yeah. they got number three. But Senegal, they showed. And I'm actually glad that uh, they won. Even though it ended up going on penalties because they were really attacking. They shouldn't have gone to penalties, actually. They should have actually yeah. won the game very early. But you know the story of a game. If it's not uh, on your side to actually score, maybe you might win it uh, on penalties or on extra times. So I'm actually... Yeah. And, and, and with Mane, you could see he wasn't only scoring. He was assisting. With, Sa- yeah. with Salah, every time he had the ball... Like you could see with Egypt, they were only sending the ball to, to Salah. And if Salah doesn't try and cut in... Uh, then it, it, it's hard. When the tournament was playing, they only string the ball to him so he can cut in and he would cut in and try shoot. Mane was busy assisting from when the tournament started. I don't know. Does he have like four or five assists? I don't know because I didn't really check his numbers, but I know that he has more than three assists. Yeah. You know, so I was glad to see them actually win and him as the, as the he is the captain. No, uh, Koulibaly is the captain. Well, I'm guessing yeah, I might be the second captain, but who's, yeah, for him... Who's vice, who's vice, vice, who's vice captain, though? I it think it's might mine. be him. Yeah, uh, might be mine, him. Looking, yeah, looking yeah. at his age and the team he plays for and what he has actually achieved with Liverpool, I think he has enough to actually be the vice. But we'll, yeah. we'll check and just uh, confirm. But I'm actually clear that he went and then scored the final penalty that, that, that gave, you know, Senegal the... The Afcon, you know, I really did not want Egypt to win. So, yeah, congrats to them, and um, uh, yeah, hopefully even next time. Because when it comes to African uh, tournaments or teams, teams that usually think they boss, that I usually don't want to see win. Uh, yeah. Teams like your Egypt, teams like your Ghana. I used to have the yeah. same issue with Nigeria, but I'm chill with them now because they play good football. It's just that they were unlucky yeah. to then get off. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Congrats to Senegal. Anyone who is a Senegalese fan, uh, well, congrats to them. I mean, yeah. They won the AFCON. I don't know if it was the first one or the second one. I haven't really been yeah. checking my... Uh, the first one. <laughs> yeah. The first and then, yeah, one. congrats to them. He deserves... Because I think Salah does have the AFCON, right? Mm. Right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I can't comment on that. Egypt. I'm not sure with Salah. I remember Egypt no, winning in Afcon. I just don't know if Salah Sal- Sal- was already there. They've lost twice in the final. Like first one it was against Cameroon, and the second one yesterday they won against Senegal. That Salah played. The other ones I'm not sure. Yeah, I think yeah, they've lost two finals. Yeah, they've lost two finals. Salah yeah. lost two finals. Oh. oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but yeah, I'm glad yeah. um, Senegal won. Congrats to Mane. Congrats to Senegal team. Yeah, man. Mm. I, I, I doubt yeah, there's that... anyone who. Yeah. Oh, you um um uh and oh, just say something. Yeah, you can say something. I'll I'll come back to that point. No, just now. I was saying, I doubt. I was saying that I doubt that anyone in Africa is feeling very sour about Senegal winning uh, uh, the AFCON. I think most people are like, you know what, uh, they deserved it. That's how I feel. So I feel most people uh, are feeling the same thing that I'm feeling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. But then, you know, I just, I just listened to, um, to, to Mame's, uh, Mame's interview on Robert Marawa's uh, Sports Worldwide show. And yeah. You know, he, he he said something that 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 that's actually um that's very 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 um it's it's something we've always been touching like touching upon obviously in football and then it's like we always do you know what I'm saying at the same time and it's this yeah. sort of thing where football awards are given to the most popular people rather than people who have actually performed yeah. in essence. 
if you're playing for um let's say a less um attractive club for example you come into the afcon yeah. obviously you're, you're not um you're not that popular as opposed to someone maybe who plays for the, uh, the bigger european giants or whatever and then they yeah. come into the yeah, afcon yeah. so you are saying that you know he felt the player of the tournament should have been rather been given to someone like Bertrand Torre because he believed that um during uh, Bakino Faso's run good run in the tournament yeah. as dark horse yeah. obviously you know yeah. he he performed exceptionally well but because he doesn't play for Liverpool as opposed to Man um yeah. they were always going to give it to Man or Salah if Salah won they were going to give it to Salah if Man won they were going to give it to Man you know what i'm saying so he was like yeah. engaging upon that like he he was very neutral in this in this um thing yeah. despite you know obviously being overwhelmed being happy that they won and all that but so what well, what's your guys view on that because it's a very very well, important topic in football that people neglect but you know what my view about money i think money deserves it because man there was this time there was this game i think it was semi final quarter final where he got a head injury he got a concussion yeah. Yeah, but he yeah. he refused to be up, so he continued playing. But um, for all in all, man, I think Mane deserves to be playing of the tournament because okay. when he was fighting, yeah, from the first game, and he showed yeah. hunger that you want to see. So for me, yeah, yeah. Try, he, he play well, but man, I sh- I'll go for Mane. My only and my issue it was the goalkeeper of the tournament. I feel like the one who yeah. deserves to be the goalkeeper of the tournament is Egypt goalkeeper, Kabal. Yeah. Because yeah. that guy, man, from a second choice goalkeeper, yeah. and he helped Egypt pass, yeah. he cannot shoot out. Mm-hmm. Man, he deserves to be the goalkeeper of the tournament. Because Mendy yeah. now is playing for Chelsea, so they're going to give him to Mendy. Yeah, but man, uh, it's unfair. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mommy, you was right because sometimes this award you know, yeah, they're given to people who have like who plays for bigger teams in Europe. Because man, I mm. Egypt goalkeeper man, Brian is penalty in seven minutes magic. Man. That guy is good. He it is a it is have something from this afcon. Yeah. yeah, but for play of the tournament, uh, for me, money deserved it. But for the goalkeeper one, I'll go for the Egypt keeper. Man. Yeah, he deserves something. Yeah. All right. Well, well, um, talking about money and salary, right? This is how I usually look at it. It's like it's the same comparison I would use when I use uh Messi and Cristiano in Europe when they yeah. play for you know your Real Madrid, your Barcelona, your Manchester, your Juventus. But anytime those two play, everyone else else is forgotten. You know. Yeah. Even if they deserve it, at times uh, everyone else gets overlooked. You know. I, I, I mean, mm-hmm. we've seen it so many times. There's certain, uh, let's say, trophies or certain uh, awards that certain people should shouldn't have won, but then they they they've won because of their standing and the teams. That they play for. So looking yeah. at uh, Man in Salah, I tend to look at it like that. Even though they perform, but then everyone else gets overlooked. You know, to add mm-hmm. on what also uh, said, I do believe that Mane does deserve to win a uh, play of the tournament. Like I said, mm-hmm. he wasn't the one pushing to score the goals more well. They, they were closing him down, but he was able to assist a lot of goals. You know. Yeah. So for me, for a player who comes, you know, for Liverpool, from Liverpool, who is always known for scoring and then gets there, you know, and you see that I'm, I, I'm getting close down most times when we attack. Let me then turn into the sister. And he did. You could see he did yeah. with his team. And one thing that I liked about him uh, last night when he missed the penalty, he did not put his head down. Immediately, he was the one pumping the fans up, saying, we're still going, still early on. You know, someone else would have been like, ah, I'm the superstar of the team. I missed the penalty. Let my head, I will, I'll let my head drop. But he did not. He continued pushing. Yeah. And I'm not going to use the, the, the final game as the decider, where him being chosen as the, uh, what's this, 
left the tournament. But looking at the whole tournament, he did he did perform. He assisted, he pushed, you know. So looking at everyone else, yeah, Traore did perform, but you know at times it, it's your run. Where did your run end and where did your run take you? Mane's run took him to the final and then he won the final. Traore yeah. was long forgotten. Because that's the thing, at times you can look at other players that were, were good during the tournament when it started. Because if I look at Cameroon, for example, I can point out, um, look at me forgetting, the, uh, Abu Bakr. I can put out, yeah. point out the captain. The captain performed. Mm. And if someone else, I would say he also deserves, but then we would say no, because the tournament was in Cameroon, uh, you cannot now give it to him. He did not even win you know, the tournament. You know, so it's one of those. He Mane took the run until the final, and then he actually won the final, and he scored the mm. final uh, penalty. Because people they usually uh, don't pay attention or they don't know how hard. I mean, I never played football professionally like those guys, but to be the last one to shoot the last penalty that decides if you win or you don't win, I feel it's very hard. And we've seen even the best. We've seen Messi miss the penalty in the final. It's not easy. And it's that thing of people uh, who like making it seem like hitting a penalty and scoring it is easy. It's not easy. You can have a technique that, that you, you practice day and night, but when you're now faced with now the decision of having to score to decide winning the trophy or going to the next round of a certain trophy, it's not that easy. So looking mm. at his run and then him scoring the final penalty, yeah, I think it's well-deserved. No, I, 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 firmly, I firmly agree with you, man. And, you know, obviously, um, yeah, we will go, we will come him, back. Man. Yeah, we <laughs> so will come back to this topic. Huh? Yeah, I just wanted to add something on well, uh, what okay, you no, said. Okay, now we, we, we wrap it up and move to the next uh, topic. Yeah, I mean, because what money did, man, in the finals, it's really encouraging because man imagine in the first 10 minutes you missed the penalty i suppose that's supposed to, to win an afcon and then in the in the line and, and, and then you, you still want you, you like you still want to take the last penalty so yeah that for me it takes courage for someone to do that like to miss the first penalty and then still have guard yeah. even to shoot yeah. the last penalty so man yeah i he really deserved it, and it, it takes courage for someone to do that. It takes a win, actually, because yeah, yeah. you might if you miss the yeah, penalty yeah. in the final, and you go into penalty shootout, and then you decide, I man, I, I missed that penalty, so I don't want to take any more. So, but at least yeah, money exactly. he yeah. up, took it, and he scored. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, true, true. Yeah, no, I agree. Because man, oh, we've seen we've seen people, greatest players ever, to to grace. Uh, the football pitch miss uh, penalties yeah. in the final, and you know it. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make them it doesn't make them any less of quality players because they are quality players. It's just true, that true. at that point, there's a lot of pressure. People don't understand the pressure that these players are under. Exactly. You know, imagine yeah, yeah. 50, 50 to hundred or eighty k people, you know, watching, true, and true. at the same time, you know that there's people at home watching. You, and there's millions at home watching. You. Yeah, and you have to take a winning penalty, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. So, props to Manu, props to Senegal, and we'll, we will come back to this topic because the guy who's gonna join us is also gonna want to cover, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously the tactical a- aspects of the final and stuff like that. But, yeah, oh, yeah, moving on, moving on to 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 um, before I get to the the, the grand finale, which is obviously our team, but moving on to Barcelona, <laughs> uh, guys. Barcelona, um, great result from, for, for them. Obviously, new signings. You know, Obama Young came in as, as a substitute. Um, yeah. Adama Torre uh, assisted a goal with a wonderful cross. And Barcelona seemed to be, you know, um, like one thing I've, I've noticed about Barca is, is they, they always play entertaining football. The football qualities never ever ever diminishes yeah doesn't matter oh, what quality yeah. players on the pitch they yeah. never diminishes so this is why i essentially do watch them regardless you know regardless of the results i do actually check their games out yeah. because it's really entertaining so what do you guys think yeah. about the signing i know they they, they short term but what do you 
guys think about the signings they made to save their season? Uh, when it comes to Barca signing, man, okay, so <laughs> for me, I feel like some of the signings were just reckless signing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, like you can't go and sign like Luke Young, man. What does Luke Young does? He doesn't fit in Barcelona philosophy. <laughs> You see, <laughs> yeah, but because you know, Barca, Barca, they love quick players, quick forwards, like from midfielders and attackers. They want quick players, and then we decide to sign Luke De Jong. Why? <laughs> like, I don't understand. That guy is still a question mark. I don't know why they signed Luke De Jong for me. So, <laughs> yeah, and then okay, Martin Braithwaite, I do understand because he's quick, he's quick, he's clinical. Yeah. Yeah, I do understand when it comes to it. But uh, also Bamiang. Bamiang, I think he will fit he do he'll fit good in Barca because his style of play, because he comes from Arsenal. Arsenal they do play a little bit of tiki taka in positional game. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like Obamiang will fit well. And also we have like we have two quick forwards, man. Imagine Obamiang and Adama Travel. Yeah, so those yeah. signings are good. So you know when it comes to signing, you need to sign players that fit your philosophy. You shouldn't just sign a player who won't be that close. Yeah, yeah. Because Luke mm-hmm. Young is not quick enough. And I don't know how he will fit in Barca's team. And it's it, it, it disappointing for me when it comes to Barca, man. It's, <laughs> maybe it's Depay. I don't understand that guy. <laughs> he was overrated, man. I used to tell him that this guy is overrated. That guy won't do anything to Barca. Hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah, but, but, you know, I, I feel like Barca's coach, the former coach, Schumann or that guy, whoever he is, he was signing based on, maybe he was signing like Holland players, players from Netherlands. I, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, but at least Xavi came, he signed his players, and now Barca are starting to play like the real Barcelona that we know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I feel like Xavi, Xavi still, he still has a long way to go, and when it comes to his signing, he still has to adapt. Yeah, but for me, man, yeah, now they're looking exciting. I'll start watching Barca again because, yeah, start playing yeah. good football. Yeah. Hey, man, so you're exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, because Messi no, left, he hasn't been watching it. <laughs> Messi left, you know, he I also mean, left and went to PSG. Yeah, hey, man, because I used to check the lineup, man. I was thinking, what do you man? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> then make this Dubai like ah man Dubai. Mm. I I just prefer to watch Premier League than, than watching Barca. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So talking about Barcelona, one point maybe it's, it's a two point. I don't want to agree with um Celso. Is him kind of blaming uh who's this? <laughs> Is it Coleman? Yeah, yeah. The former coach. And you know why yeah, I'm yeah. going to say that. It's yeah. the same situation that yeah. is happening uh, with Manchester. But let me go back to Barcelona. The ones who yeah. employed Coleman were the board of Barcelona, right? He did not employ yeah. himself, right? Mm. And the players that they chose to go sign, they did not sign themselves. They mm. decided mm. to go sign mm. them. I mean, the board could have always uh, decided to maybe tell Coleman that you cannot have this certain players because they don't mm. maybe fit our style of play. They could have yeah. overruled his decision regarding certain players. So that's why I have a problem where now, obviously, yeah, the coach at the end is, is the one who's, gonna, who's going to get most of the blame. But my problem yeah. is you chose to go get the, that coach who then comes with mm. his own philosophy and style of play. He didn't want to get there and play the Barcelona way. The Tiki Taka, mm. you know. Mm. And the reason I'm saying that, yeah. what if maybe the Barcelona way the Tiki Taka is now over for Barcelona? What if they can no longer get back to him? What if now yeah. everyone else already know, knows how they play so much that even if they try it with the best players, they know how to stop them in how they are playing? And the reason I'm, yeah. the re- the reason I'm pointing this out is because I mentioned Manchester. You've, we've been yeah. hearing as Man United fans, we've been hearing, we need to play the Man United way. The Man United way. Yeah. And the Man United way, we mostly remember is by Ferguson. But we all can yeah. see that we can no longer play the same way that Ferguson played. Because football has changed. You know, 
football does not stop in one place. It continues. The way players play, the way coaches play is an evolution. So yeah. you cannot think that how you played 10 years ago, you're going to still play that way and still win the same trophies that you won. It was Ferguson, mm. uh, Ferguson's style of play or, let me say, Pep's style of play before he left. And whoever who then came and replaced uh, Pep or whoever who followed they, they, they must come and play their own style of football. So when they lose yeah. and they are not successful, it's not blame on them. Because if you play me, if I'm the coach and you play me and say, I'm the reason the team is not performing, I will say no because I didn't get to get the, the team to play my way. So how do you then mm. blame me? You know. So like the players that I also mentioned, your Memphis, your Luke, they might be trash players in terms of Barcelona standards. But, but at the end, they did not sign themselves, you know. The one player that I was shocked, Luke, Luke I was shocked at that player. I was like, where is this guy going? Because I saw him play for Sevilla when uh, yeah. Manchester was playing. Like yeah. I was like, okay, he scored a header because we were also weak in defense. But he's not the type of player that would sign for a team like Barcelona or Real Madrid, you know. So it was the thing of, it was a shocker. So the new signings, though, I can give them props. I can give them props because uh, what's this? They signed uh, uh, Abu Mayeng, who is a type of player that can actually perform properly for Barcelona. We've seen how yeah. he plays. We've seen him from Dortmund. We've also seen seen him play for Arsenal. You know, so I I I, I do see him performing there. And then Traor, uh, that one is a given. The way he plays, I feel that yeah. if he then yeah. goes and plays for Barcelona, you know, I mean, he was their player. You know, they yeah. just decided that, you know, uh, they're going to sell him. So the way he plays, his speed, his strength, I feel like he's going he's gonna to assist a lot of goals. You know, maybe players like Luke, Luke Dijon will score, will benefit from this because someone who is able to use his head and crosses from uh, Traore, he might, you know, uh, perform and you know we might be seeing something different after two months or so you know so looking at yeah. the signings the, the current signings not bad they might help help them you know start performing better but like i said what if the barcelona way is now done what if it's done yeah what if everyone has read that that, that book and as much as they will try it but people are able to play through it and then outperform yeah. Barcelona. Oh, because we've seen some teams who, who, who have outperformed Barcelona. Barcelona can do their tiki taka and have all the positions. But at the end, who scores wins the game? You yeah, know? sure. So, yeah, with, with, with the appointment of Xavi, uh, from my, from how I'm understanding it, we'll see how, how will do, he, he will do because. I feel like they're trying to do the same thing they did with Pep, where they take their former player who became a who was now a coach who's able to play the same way they want to play, you know Barcelona playing playing star tiki taka, you know. So we'll yeah. see, we'll see. Let, let the season end and then he gets exactly the players that he wants and then we'll see how he will play. True. No, I hear you, man. I hear you, man. Um, obviously, you know. Um, Besides Barcelona and their progress, because now apparently they are in fourth now in the in the La Liga standings. Um, sure. Well, they they fourth now. Yeah, they fourth now. Yeah. And now we also have like a player on loan watch. Uh, Martial obviously joined Sevilla on the on the, on a loan on a six month loan deal. So yeah. um, apparently his coach is already, you know, he was saying that he needs more from him because his first game didn't go according to plan. Apparently he didn't perform according to the standards they said. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know. so what, what do you guys think? You know, what, what Marshall, do you want him back at Manchester United or you guys are happy with him? God. Hey, like with me personally, ne, I like Marshall, right? Yeah. But he tends to play in a way that doesn't give most fans, you know, confidence that he will score. Because like I, like I said, the reason I like Michelle is that he's able to play those link-up plays, those, those one-two touches. 
when he plays with players that are smart like him, he's able to play how he wants to play. The, those ones who touch him, pass and move, pass and run, you know, he's able to play to, to play less. So if he can get and play and maybe rediscover that form, then maybe he can, you know, I, I, I won't lie, I want him to come back because I find it unrealistic to go try sign someone else while, because Michelle is so young. We must not now come and lie to ourselves and say, ah, Michelle must go. We know he can perform, but obviously the yeah. way he plays at times, it's like he wants to be involved, but he doesn't want to be involved. And this is the same thing that, because looking at what's the Sevilla, Sevilla might, you know, I don't know, because they're number two in the log. But my thing is, yeah. we don't really know, because I, I saw a tweet yesterday, someone who said, the way Sevilla plays is very boring and very slow. So, and the person was like, I don't know if Marshall is going to uh, benefit from this. Uh, yeah. I need to get a charger. My phone is going to switch off. I didn't really see it. my pitch was low. But, yeah. They, 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 that's what was said, that the way they play is very slow and you don't know if my child is going to benefit from it because he needs to he needs quick play quick football mm-hmm. nah, hey. Nah, hey, man. um did you, is your phone gonna switch off right now yeah i'm just gonna get charge it quick but i think it's gonna switch off now yeah. now let me get a charge yeah, quick let's get a charge quick man uh, Celso, man, you tell me, okay. you tell me what, what, what's your view with, with the Marshall thing? And do you want him back? Because I know you uh, are not very patient with players. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. man. Yeah. You know what, man? In Europe, man, you get you get paid to do what you love, man. And if you yeah. do that, man, you are, you, are, you are a very lucky person to do what you love every day. Mm. And then... Yeah, I get a second chance to go to the villa, first game. Imagine, imagine, like you know, you not perform on the first game, so it 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 will, it will create a bad image to the coach, or maybe the coach wants to upload him because he's a poor game that time. So I feel like Martial, yeah, we we must give him a second chance. Uh, maybe yeah. that's why Manchester United they send him on loan. Maybe they want him to get his confidence back, his scoring touch back. Yeah, but all in all, it depends. To, it depends on Martial if he wants to regain his football reputation or yeah. scoring, getting his finishing touch. Yeah, so all in all, it's up to him, man. Because you know what? In football, you you can decide your future. You can turn in things around on your own. It, uh, it's up to you. It's up. It's up on your personality. Because look like look at Coutinho. Mm. Mm. Many people felt like his football now it was fading away. He was weak. He's no longer playing. Like he wouldn't fit in the Premier League because in past he wasn't playing. But he mm, came back. Mm. He delivered and got a national call up, international call up. So and now he's performing and he scored a good goal during the the World Cup qualifiers against Paraguay. So yeah, it's up to Martial. For, for me, if Martial wants to be part of Manchester United. He needs to show in Spanish La Liga that he is good. He's still fit to mm. play for Manchester United. Yeah, because mm. uh, man, uh, after his first game, so he really maybe many many fans were look were looking out for him, like maybe he'll score and we'll do something because it's been a long time mm. since he, he hasn't played. But mm. uh everything went bad. So I just hope second game he can deliver. So that he can re- he get his, his magic touch back, like he's scoring. Because there was this t- there was this season, Marshall was winning a lot of game for us, man. We even beat City. Yeah. We even beat City when Marshall dominated the. He was dominating. He scored Anderson like yo, man. He was on fire in the, during that game. I think one two one. Yeah. Where yeah, it was when we beat City in their home ground. So yeah, I'm looking forward for him to at least regain his football. Taj is yeah, just to get his football confidence back and start scoring. Yeah, that's all, man. Yeah. So he needs to yeah, push man. more. Mm. Now I think I think with him it's 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 always been um a consistency problem. He's never been a consistent player. He's only had I think if we had to be if we have to be completely honest, since he's been at Man United. You can only say yeah. that he's only had like two 
good seasons. The one where yeah, yeah. Van Gaal was here, when, when um, Van Gaal was here, and I think it's when in his first season as a Man United yeah, yeah. player. And then it was the one way he, he scored. When, when was it? It was um, Solskjaer's, I think, second season, if not is it first or second season. Way, 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 machine. Mm-hmm. I think it, it was Solskjaer's uh, first season. First mm-hmm. yeah, season. Yeah, yeah so um, I think that's when he also had a good season. And then the following season, he just, he just never got on. Like, for me, I feel like, He's a confidence player, but at the same time, I feel like he doesn't work as hard as he could. You know, yeah, and okay. in football, yeah. if you want to maintain mm-hmm. consistency, and you know this very well because you, you still play football, um, yeah, whenever yeah, yeah, you get true. the chance. So you have to, you have to, like you, you cannot skip training. You can't skip working hard. You know, you can't say today I'm going to work hard, tomorrow I'm going to chill. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, man, and I, I yeah, hope, I hope. Yeah. yeah. to earn that, because I feel like, you know, there's some certain players, man, that need man management. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. are certain players that are self-disciplined, you see. But maybe I feel like Martial is that type of player that he needs to be man-managed, like Eric Cantona. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah like Bob. Because some players, they, they, they want to feel love. Like, mm-hmm. I, I want... Mm-hmm. Eric Cantona has the Manchester United way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. Way, the documentary. He said that he played for a lot of teams. Né? The reason yeah. he was mm-hmm. he was misbehaving because he, he didn't feel that love that say Alex Ferguson gave it to him. So all like mm. like you were saying like all I wanted for me, I wanted to to feel love, to feel important. Maybe now a lot of mm. coaches they don't implement that man management. Yeah. So that's why many of our maybe our United players are not performing because there's no such thing as man management. Because sometimes you just need to take down or call the player like asking, man, what's going on? Is your life good? Why are you not scoring? You see, yeah. just be involved in that player's personal life. So yeah, I feel like Manchester United, we don't have that philosophy anymore. That's the Alex Ferguson way to treat players. Because now Martial, maybe maybe he just wanted to feel love to someone to talk to him to regain his football, his, his love for football. So, yeah. But all yeah. in all, man, like we said, I just mm-hmm. hope he will regain his football, love again at Sevilla, start scoring, performing, and then maybe get a call-up to represent France in the World Cup. Yeah. But, man, I, our, our United, man, I, man, you, why? That team is destroying a lot of players, man. Even if you can check, <laughs> I mean, you know, if, if you can check, look at Sancho, man. Hey. That boy was terrorizing Bundesliga, even Bayern, great teams. But look at him now. So, yeah, I feel like we need those type of coaches that can have man management. Yeah, and sorry to go off Rampiana, you see, because like Tuchel said, after Aubameyang left to Barcelona, Tuchel yeah. said when he was coaching Aubameyang in Dortmund, he used to arrive late. Yeah. But they, they could understand because it's Aubameyang. So they, they, they were men managing him just to be disciplined. Yeah. But look what Ateta done. He came for training just late, maybe once or twice. Now he decides to offload him. And slip off with mm. Captain. So it doesn't make sense. So some players, they, they need that love, man. That main management, yeah. that extra care, yeah, to help them at least perform. But some coaches now they don't do that. Like even Messi. Pep, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. there were a lot of players who said when Pep went to Man City, he said only player, only player who allows to dispute with him is Messi. If you're not Messi, you're not allowed to, de- to debate with him. So you can see yeah. great players, man, they have a say. Like even CR7, I feel like mm-hmm. You know, like Ragni, you should approach Ronaldo and ask which players do you play best in front, like in front yes. of you? Like, yeah. Which players do you yeah. want? Yeah, which players mm. do you feel like they can combine with you? Because right now, I, I feel like Sancho combines well with Ronaldo and Cavani. Mm. But Rashford, man, is doing his Rashford things. I don't know what he's doing, but I, he just becomes so selfish, man, in such a way that I can't understand. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I hear you. 
I hear you. Uh, we've got guests here. Um, we've got more guests. Mamen Young, welcome, welcome. I've been waiting for you because obviously with the AFCON, uh, you know, you, you are celebrating, you are unreachable. Man. Uh, I think your phone was <laughs> off yesterday. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, guys, um, no, no, was, by the way, was, my, I've been, I've been, yeah. I've been celebrating definitely. I've been first of all, I greet everybody that's in the panel. Hope you guys are, are you good. Man? So, oh, good, yeah, oh, good man. man. Yeah, man. I've been, I've been busy. Robert, I was talking to Robert Marawa and some other radio, some other local radio station in SA. So today and last night, I was, I slept late, so I, I woke up a bit late today. <laughs> oh. I'm still in the celebration yeah, mood. <laughs> How about you guys yeah. deserve it? So yeah, give man. one now and you get one and you guys deserve it. Now you, you deserve it, yeah. We yeah, were saying before you came yeah. in that before most people in Africa watching the AFCON are very happy that Senegal ended up winning it. And yeah, I'm one yeah. of them, you know. Yeah, yeah I was one of them rooting for, for Senegal to win it. Thank you, man. Thank you. And I think I think it's it's I think many people didn't many people didn't want Egypt to get to get his eight medal eight eight stars because then they're gonna be they're gonna be drifting yeah. away from the from the pack. Yeah. So mm -hmm. more true, true. and 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 also I think it's important it's important for if Senegal wins now for the first time, like Zambia did a couple a couple of years back. It, yeah. Yeah. it opens it opens up uh, the door for other teams to 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 believe to believe they can win it, you know. Yeah. No, true, true. Because the gap, the gap, the gap as a, the gap is not is not is not big anymore. If you watch this last Afcon, Zimbabwe has done well. You know, Guinea yeah. has done well. Sierra Leone has done well. Small countries that you never thought they would be. They will be keeping Senegal, mm -hmm. the likes of Senegal and the likes of Algeria, Ivory Coast, quiet. They've, they've done, they've all done well, which is very important. That's true, that's true. Yeah, very true. Um, Celso, is it, is it you in the background that um, they're making a lot of noise? Ah, uh, no, it's not me. <laughs> I'm in my room right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, um, Mame just t uh, touched up, and obviously, um, I wanted to ask him about because since he's a very straightforward man, you know, um, he yeah. for some reason, Mame, I think is the only player I know that doesn't talk in in riddles. I mean, he's he's straightforward in terms of um, saying what needs to be said, you know. And we we were speaking about it. Funny enough, uh, we we're speaking about you challenging this thing where you know the most popular players win awards. You know, ahead of um, you know the the more le the less unknown players. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, and I wanted to like, what are your your, your true true feelings? Because I know you said you you said that um, you felt Mendy didn't deserve to win it, uh, mm. win the goalkeeper the tournament. You felt yeah. that uh, I think the Egyptian goalkeeper. You thought the Egyptian goalkeeper should have uh, yeah. won it. So, like, what what do you think? What do you think about this whole popularity thing in football? And you know, what what does it do to the credential of the awards? You know, themselves? you know one you know one thing people need to understand is, uh, like, you, when you watch the Ballon d'Or, mm. everybody know everybody know the Ballon d'Or is France is from France. The Ballon d'Or people yeah. don't know the Ballon d'Or is not a European thing. Yeah, it's French football that created the Ballon d'Or. Mm. So the so 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 for them to 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 promote the Ballon d'Or to make it bigger, it has to be always a bigger profile. Let's face it: when 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 Messi won it previously, I'm not talking about last year. I'm not talking about this year, but the year before, mm. Sadio Mane deserves it more than Messi mm. because he has he was in the Cup African Cup of Nations final. He won the Champions mm. League. He won the Premier League with Liverpool, he, and he was top scorer in the Premier League. I mean, what more do you need for a, for a personal for, for 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 somebody to be to be given a Ballon d'Or? Mm. Barca, Barca didn't win the league. Messi was at Barca then. Barca didn't win the league. 
Messi was just top scorer. Argentina didn't win, didn't win any cup. Argentina only won the the F Copa America this year, and yet they gave it to Messi. It's a and the same goes because because you must know Ballon d'Or. They Edward Mendy was the best goalkeeper in the in in the world last year. Yeah. Yet they true, gave Donna Roma, Donna Roma, the 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 best goalkeeper, the the, the in the start eleven. Mm-hmm. Why? Donna Roma first is the Italian goalkeeper. He plays for Milan, mm-hmm. and Milan. Everybody mm-hmm. knows Milan is a bigger club than Chelsea, trophy wise, mm-hmm. name wise, and structure wise. Mm-hmm. He he left it. He left. Uh, he left it. Uh, Milan to go to PSG. Ballon d'Or is a French team. It's a French team. Obviously, mm-hmm. they're going to push Donnarumma in, ahead of Edouard Mendy. Yeah. So, same things goes in this thing. I think the Egyptian goalkeeper was was a better performer yeah. than all the goalkeepers I've seen. Despite him coming yeah. as a sub, despite him yeah. coming as a sub in the quarterfinals, I think. Yeah. It's, been the, it's been outstanding. But... Because Edward, remember Senegal. Edward, Edward Mendy didn't play the third, two first games of Senegal. There was we had yeah. our third goalkeeper that played two games, and he kept two clean sheets. Yeah. So, so if you put it together, Edward Mendy and this this goalkeeper almost came at the same time. But performance wise, the Egyptian goalkeeper performed better. Mm. But Edward Mendy is Edward Mendy. It's, he yeah. might be. He might not be bigger than Donnarumma in Europe, but he's bigger than this guy in Africa. Yeah, he's a Chelsea goalkeeper. He won the Champions League. He won the Europa. He won the full F, FA Cup previously, and he won mm-hmm. the 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 what do you call it? the Super Cup, Europa Super yeah. Cup. So that those things they they weigh on his on people's decision of of giving him. Goalkeeper of the tournament. Same with Sadio Mane. I think Sadio played well. De- I I think he he deserved to be to be player of the tournament. He played well, but I feel like there was other players that played as well as he did. Like Bertrand yeah. Traoré of Burkina Faso, that captain mm. of Burkina Faso. I think he played a terrific tournament. But again, it's Sadio Mane, and he's an African champion. So Calf they make things the easiest way it. The easiest way possible for themselves. Yeah. Instead of instead of going into statistics, how many how many games did, did Sydney play compared to Mame? How many how many dribbles did Sydney make? How many b- successful passes did Sydney? They don't go through those things. They give you man of the match because you save one penalty. They give you man of the match because you scored a penalty in the, the, the last minute. Yeah. Before the man of the match, man of the match isn't isn't based on one one thing you did in the game. The man of the match is, is based on the ninety minutes. You can't you can't give man of the match somebody that came on twenty five minutes to go and score two goals. <laughs> That's that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at all. So these are the these are the things that that we need to we need to you know we need to teach 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 the next generation and teach. We need yeah. to change in our approach of the game. Mm. Mm. No, I fully agree. No, I fully can, agree. I, can I add I something? Agree. Yeah. Yeah. From what you said. So another issue that I've usually I usually see is that it's like the African tournaments that we usually have. Yeah. It's like FIFA yeah. doesn't really deem them as important as your your European, your South American, because I feel like it would be easier to choose uh, certain African players for certain European, let's say, awards, if it's a Balloon War, for example, if it's money, if we're all playing at the same time, instead of having the AFCON alone in its own time, when it's early in the year, most people are not really watching it. And when I say most people, when, uh, let's say, for example, when Euros are playing, most of us are watching, even Africans, even Africa is watching. It's not only Europe or South America 
are watching. So I feel like this thing of excluding, as much as right now they don't see it as a problem, but it is a problem because I feel like that's why usually our players in certain tournaments are not seen as important as your Euros, your Copa America. It's not as important. If they, they took, uh, listen, you see how the World Cup, everyone performs. There's African teams, there's the Europeans, there's you know, South Americans. Everyone is there. So it's easy to see which players are performing. It's not easy to just say it's Messi or Ronaldo who performed. You get to see everyone performing. But right now, it's AFCON. The English Premier League is, is still continuing. It's playing. Yeah. While, for example, the South African League is not playing. You know. Yeah. So that's one of those things where it's like, how does FIFA then handle the situation to resolve even the other issues that come up? where African players are not seen as, you know, because it's due time to actually see an African player, either Mane or Salah, actually win the Ballon d'Or. But because of how they view, you know, uh, the tournaments uh, that we have, it's like, okay, it's, it's important, but not as, as important. So I feel once yeah. they start fixing that situation, it will then allow, because I doubt they even air, uh, the Africa was this African Cup of Nations in Europe. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying. I doubt yeah. because I mean, yeah. FA Cup is still playing in Europe, uh, in England. Yeah. English Premier League is still playing. Uh, La Liga is still playing. Serie A is still playing. While uh, yeah. we were having our, our own tournament this side. Yeah, I agree with yeah, you. I agree with you. I totally agree. I with totally you. agree I with you. I, I think. I think. Calf doesn't Cuff, play the, doesn't the, play the, the role they were supposed, the to play was supposed to play towards Europe. Towards Europe. When it comes to it comes. These big tournaments. Because like what happened with when Jurgen Klopp said that he thought Africa was a simple like Afghan was the, just like a, those simple tournaments. Mm. Mm. There's like nobody nobody from CAF spoke out. People from social media like myself we are the we were the one commenting on on sky sports we were the one complaining who are we we just former football players people not not going to hear us but if a, if a, if a patrice motsepe wrote on on on, on that comment or made an mm. interview on that comment they're going to hear it yeah yeah. This is why this is why they don't give us that, that respect we, we deserve as Africans. Because Jurgen Klopp can 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 talk shit about our, our, our continent's uh, biggest tournament, yet he's got his two best players in his team. Mm. Like I said previously in, I, I told Robert Marawa earlier, if I was a play, if I was Sadio Mane or I was Salah, I would talk to him. I would tell him shit. Mm. But because yeah. we, we Africans we have that that weak mentality. I live in Europe. I was I led a team that was in fourth division last year. And I I had an assistant that 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 was just doing his shit. So I called the whole team. I was the only black man in that room. I called the mm. whole team. I said if this if this guy is going to do his his shit the way he wants, I quit. Because I'm the boss. I'm the I'm the mm. I'm the head coach of this team, so things mm. need to be done mm. the way I want it. And yeah. they understood that because it doesn't matter where you come from, you when you when you when you when you deserve respect, you must get your respect. And that's 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 where mm. we, we we Africans get get to to a stage where Europeans need to understand that Afcon is as big as South. As Copa America is as big as a Euro, European. When they, when there is a when there is a Euros, why do we stop our our our, our leagues? When there is Afcons, they don't stop their leagues. Why we, why should mm. we stop our leagues? Mm. At least in my At country, in they my play. country they play. In Senegal they in play. Senegal they, they, play. they don't give a shit. When 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 when, 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 when play, the Euros play, play. Senegal is league is playing. Mm. Because th mm. that's how it is. These people they don't should... respect us the way they're supposed to respect us. We should, we shouldn't, we should, we should give them the, we should give them back the same thing. And calf should mm. should, should mm. play their role, because calf is not doing much. Mm. Calf isn't doing much. Like yesterday, what happened? 
when when Senegal won the cup, they taking the cup to the president of 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 of, of Cameroon. They taking the cup to the to the to the top of the tribune. Patrice Motsepe is holding the cup. What is that FIFA guy holding the cup for? It looks stupid. Motsepe is working with the cup. Why? Why is he having his hand? That's how FIFA wanna be. They wanna control Africa. It's good that Motsepe yeah. had a good grip on it. Why will you hold yeah. the cup? Why? That cup is like how many kilos? That cup is not even a kilo. Mm-hmm. One hand can 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 carry that cup. Why does he need to put his hand there? Because that's how FIFA is. They want to control Africa, like Europe has been controlling us over centuries. Yeah. This thing needs to change. Yeah, I would like to add, yeah, because you know yeah. what I feel like, like like Mama just said about Kev not playing their role. Because you know what, I think Kev they need to come up with a better marketing strategy. Because if you can check the re- the way I see the reason Euro is so famous and there's a lot of competition. Because usually they play during the off season, and off season we all want to watch football during the off season, and it's yeah. between May and June. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I feel like Kev they need to come up with a better marketing strategy when it comes to Afcon. Because now. If you can check for for me, I feel like Afcon and the pitch are still not world class because you can yeah. see nations complaining about their pitch bumpy. So yeah, Cap needs to start improving the uh, the stadiums, the grass, mm-hmm. the pitch, mm-hmm. and the marketing structure needs to be more strategic when it comes to Cap. Because man, if you can check Euro, the the reason Euro will still dominate is because mm-hmm. it plays during off season. Likely, at least Senegal now implemented that during off season they do play league games, so that's much better. So maybe we Kev needs to at least move Afcon maybe to June, or during that season where where many people will watch football. Because now Premier League is famous, like Sim said, Premier League is playing, Italian League is playing, Spanish League, Bundesliga, they're playing. So it comes to views, and many people they won't watch Kev because. They, it doesn't have that ma- strong marketing structure. Mm. So we end up watching Premier League, FA Cup, while we're supposed to watch what Africa to support our African team, African nation. So yeah, I, I fully agree with Mame and Sim. Like we need to have a better plan when it comes to Kev. And Kev needs and to come up with a better plan. Come with a better plan. Come with a better plan. Because many people don't, many people don't, don't watch. What uh Soso said. Um the thing is Kev can do whatever they want to do, but at the end of the day, the disrespect from the football body itself towards African Africans is there. And the reason I'm saying, you, you can see something as simple as the number of teams that get to perform in the World Cup for Africa. Mm-hmm. It's too shocking and confusing to me why it was still a discussion in this day and age. I feel like it's something that should have been decided looking at the number of, of, of countries we have as Africa. Mm. But yet we get to have few uh, countries that come to play in the World Cup while let's say Europe or South America might even have more while they have fewer uh, countries or even like you, that's something that we've seen for years. And it's only now they're trying to address it by adding more teams to play. But my thing is, why did it take so long? And that's my thing. Kev can do whatever they want to do, but at the end of the day, FIFA itself needs to make the decisions because already coaches, Let's say I'll use uh, English Premier League as an example. Coaches are complaining, using Klopp as an example, when he lost your Salah, your money, he was complaining that the players are going. And that's why he was even, you could even see how he, he was addressing the importance of an AFCON when he was even a, um, attacked verbally by one of the journalists, like what uh, Mami, M- Mami was saying. It's one of those things where it's like, you don't take it as important if you... If you do take it as important as you say you do, then 
address it with FIFA. Let FIFA come up with strategy, strategies, like Celso said, that will allow CAF yeah. and whatever tournaments that are under CAF to play around the same time as, you know, in Europe or as in South America, instead of having such uh, different uh, tournaments. Because that's why we, we, when you look at Africa, AFCON, we've, we've all loved and watched AFCON for so many years, but it, it has lost its standing over the years. Because like yeah. I said, if you, you end up having to watch English Premier League while AFCON is playing, you're going to decide that, you know what, let me just watch English Premier League. Because the way they, they put out, you know, uh, AFCON, is, it, the, the importance is not there. Yeah, the broadcast. The, 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 the challenge we have, our, ch- our biggest challenge, like Soso said, in the, when it comes to pitches, that's, mm. that, that's, that's definitely a, a, a financial problem. Because if you if you take if you don't if you take take South Africa and North Africa, mm. South Africa has the best pitches in in Africa, and North Africa, mm. Morocco, Tunisia. Sure. When it comes to quality of the grass, mm-hmm. but it, one thing we must understand: South Africa is the only country in Africa that has hosted a World Cup. And for you to be to be to be to be eligible to to host a World Cup, FIFA needs to come through and check your pitches, every single one of them. Calf inspection when it comes to Afcon, it's like they send two people to go through the grass and check. You must check FIFA expect inspection when they come to when it comes to World Cup. It's like a board. They send a board of people, ex- experienced people, people that expertise that know how the grass should be. Mm. And when mm. you play like count, one thing people need to know, the Central Africa, Central Africa, it's a humid place because Africa is a hot place. And Central Africa, like your Cameroon, your Congo, those places are very humid and they rain. it rains a lot. Mm. To contain a good grass, to contain a good grass, you really need, you mm. need mm. proper... It needs to be proper. Mm. That's why it's difficult. You will see when Ivory Coast host Ivory Coast, it's gonna. The, you see Cameroon, the grass was very wet because those it's a humid place. Cameroon, mm. uh, Ivory Coast is gonna host next time. You will see the grass is gonna be dry because that's just how Africa is. That's that's how that's how our 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 continent is. When you compare it yeah. to Europe. Europe is it's a colder place. It's not so humid and it's a colder place. So they have heat, they have heat under the they heat it the under the grass. They have heat it under the grass. Mm. And that's make the grass last longer. And that's 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 just that's just a financial problem. Yeah. And calf can't calf don't calf, calf will never build a stadium for a, a, a country. No chance. They will never do that. Forget yeah. it. This is just this is just how we are as African. We must we must just deal with it. This is why we we ha- we we've got the most flair in the in 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 the world. We and South Americans, South American stadiums are almost the same. The, some of the yeah. pitches are bad. I watched Colombia against Ecuador, Ecuador not long ago. The pitch was so hard. You can see the ball is bounce, bouncing. This is this is this is a geographical problem. This calf yeah. can't do anything. FIFA can't do anything. But yeah. our 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 challenge, like you said, it's it's to, to to the problem is the tournaments can't be played at the same time at the at the same period. Like, let's say Afcon is playing in the summer, then because you must one thing you must understand here in Europe. All the Europe, European tournaments are played in the summer. This is the first time you see a World Cup played in the in the winter in in Qatar because Qatar you can't play a World Cup in the summer. It's like over fifty degrees. People are gonna die. Yeah. That's why they're playing in the winter. And South Africa also hosted in the winter because mm. South Africa mm. has a different timeline compared to Europe. But beside those country, those two countries, all the World Cup must be played in the summer but 
Af- mm. Af- Af- calf need to play need to one thing we calf needs to learn is to play the afcon every four years like the the euro does now we, if you do it every four years like the euro does you're gonna allow if if let's say if you if the euro is hosted in june mm. you host the you host the afcon in july yeah because we, we we all know european european leagues open in august right yeah it will give you that if you give you that exposure that july time the europeans they're going to watch the afcon they don't have no choice mm-hmm. they have no choice because that time they're not playing yeah but when you host when when afcon is every two years and it's january january in europe first is cold people are on some people are on holidays some people are in transfer windows teams are on a break it's a complicated period to 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 do things it's very complicated to do things like right now some teams just come came to back england just came 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 back to from the the break now they started yeah. the league again luckily afcon is finished but this is this is something calf needs to address calf this is calf decision calf needs to, we we africans need to take our responsibility and make things the way we for for afcon to be promoted we need to we need to take charge nobody yeah, else we need to promote it too, yeah we need to promote it ourselves nobody else mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I should, I should. i mean you said i mean and, and uh, now the challenge now, now the challenge that now that I is that um that um so so you can see now the thing that the thing that come again i didn't come again i didn't i it's like it's cut oh. it's cut oh. yeah what uh, yeah, the uh, echo uh, 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 that's okay that's okay but not um yeah man i was saying um like what what do you think about the world cup about the world cup that is happening in this year you you know we spoke about we spoke about the past and I think it's gonna clash. It's gonna clash. It's gonna end up clash. Um, it's gonna end up. When you think about it. When you think about it. It's 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 very bad. Very bad. I don't know if it's me or you. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why? Why is this? So it's like I'm. It's like I'm. It's like I'm hearing it twice. Well, yeah, the breaking on my side as well. I don't know what you what you said. Were you talking about um Afcon being hosted after four years if it won't clash with the World Cup? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, I'm saying no, yeah, I'm like, saying no, no, like with regards to the World Cup, we have to try to turn it into two years. Two years. Two years. Oh, the World Cup being hosted. Yeah. Every two so years. Yeah, I'm, I'm so saying now, that I'm saying that what is the advantage of continental tournaments now? Yeah, but yeah, but I I I I I doubt I doubt it. Every two years. Every two years. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be very it's gonna be very difficult because 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 what what the European 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 to bring the water yeah. bring the water yeah. and everything and everything to bring the everything it's almost mission it's impossible almost mission impossible yeah you must you must know that also the the footballers the the leagues the people are complaining that the the players are playing too many games yeah the, the people are complaining the clubs are complaining the biggest clubs in Europe they complaining that we may we they making too many they they playing too many games Imagine you bring the World Cup every two years. 
that's gonna be that's just just gonna be extra ex, extra extra games. Injury. World Cup, World Cup is the biggest stage. World Cup, the level of of, of of the standard of the World Cup is too high. Yeah. How, when 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 do players when when do players have time to 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 rest to, to actually rest? When? Because if you play, if, if you, you play, play, if you play, if you play the World Cup, you got to play it in summer. When you done the, when, when you done, done when you done in the summer, you give the players one month, then it's preseason. Yeah. yeah, you must you must know European summer is not a long summer. Eh? It's not like African summer. We have a long summer. They don't. Summer. Have they don't. Have. Yeah, yeah. Like in Norway, like where in I Norway am, where I am, mm-hmm. the summer starts. The summer starts in end of June. End of June. Mm-hmm. The whole month of July. The whole month of July and two weeks of August. Two weeks so of August. Weeks. So it's five weeks. End of August. Yeah. End of August is start with drizzling, snowing, snowing, and of November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be challenging. So it's gonna be challenging for all the, all the countries. All the countries. Are here. It's not gonna be it's easy. It's not gonna be easy to do. Do it. Do it. Like yeah, to I get to, it. to add, I died. On I what he's saying, a World Cup every two years, I don't see it working as well. I mean, no. we were, we were talking about pitches and the grass and um, all those situations. <laughs> and when the World Cup is given for, uh, to a certain country to host, they are given time to build their pitches to make sure that the grass and everything is in order for the World Cup that will be taking place. Thank so now, doing it for two you. years, how, how much time do you give the, the team that is hosting to actually prepare for the tournament? And adding on what you were saying in terms of players being tired, it won't make sense because, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, players are also human. After playing a long uh, league, they want to go and rest. They want to go take a vacation, take a trip, visit family. So if you're going to now host it every two years, when do they get rest? I mean, already just now, since 2020 started with COVID happening, we've seen players playing so many games. And yeah. they, they haven't yeah. had so much time to actually rest. Obviously, for us fans, it's exciting. We get to watch football when there's COVID in you at home. But then it doesn't really make sense for the players themselves. That's why they end up getting so many injuries. You know, in one season, you find that one player has been injured three times or four, you know. And if they're injured and, and they are, they've been in the sidelines for so long, when they have to now come back, they, they need to come back and now pick up the form as well. So I don't see it, you know, working. I mean, two years, four years already, like like uh, Mame said, it's a big tournament. So if you leave it for four years, you're able to plan for it and build the hype around it. You know, even yeah. the country yeah. or the host uh, country, you're able to build hype around. But every two years, I feel like it's too short notice in a way. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. And plus, you must understand, these are the, 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 the host, the next host is the Qatar. And these are the richest people in the world. Even even them, they, they, only, they only finished their, their, their stadiums not long ago. So imagine you give it to an African country and you said in four years you've you got to build us 10 stadiums, 10 World Cup stadiums. Mm-hmm. In two I'm years, realistic. sorry. How is that possible? That doesn't make even sense. Even if they win it in, even if they, if you tell the, if you tell a country like Morocco, let's say, you're going to host the AFCON yeah. in, in six years time. When Qatar host 2002, another country host 2022, 24, then you're going to host 2026. They're not going to mm. make it. FIFA is FIFA is going to seen as is FIFA is going to look like fools when they do that. Mm. They're going to go. Their stadiums are not tribunes are half finished, and that <laughs> that that create that create danger for the supporters. Look at how, what happened yeah. in Cameroon. Hey. The supporters died. This is yeah, no, you, you, you must understand. This is a this is a big thing they need to raise. I don't think FIFA taught it taught it well even when they when they said it's gonna be every two years, because yeah, every two years, 
you you know how the year goes, how fast the year goes these days. By the we are we were talking about 2022. Now it's already February. <laughs> we're going to March. It goes so fast. <laughs> you don't have time. Mm. They mustn't. They mustn't. They mustn't come and 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 create FIFA. You know, FIFA. They get bored. People of in FIFA. I think they get bored. Yeah, and so greedy. The, the the only the only good thing they, they they brought into the into the football world, the past 20, 30 years, is not in the past back pass to the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper catches. That's the only positive thing they they've done in thirty years. Mm. This VAR situation, half of the world is not happy about it. Half of the world is happy about it. Mm. There's always discussion. People are complaining. The referees go to the VAR TV. It's, it's he sign. He, he sees that this is a clear foul. He said no foul. Or he sees this is a clear dive. He said no no dive. He said he gave a penalty. So yeah. what's the point? Yeah, like Manchester. Yeah, what's the hey. point? No, but but you know, um, touching on the on the referee decisions because this is also another pandemic. Um, even with VAR introduced, man, we're still getting referees getting things wrong. You know, they go into the monitor, uh, they look at decisions, and then they still decide. You know, it's not what what they're supposed to give. You know, that's that's the problem we had. Uh, Previously at the weekend with, with um, on Friday, I should I say, with Manchester United, clear handball. He still went and saw. He still went to the monitor and he saw it, and then and he he still said, "You know what? We're not gonna give that." And these are you the know, best in uh, the game. These are the best rappers in the game. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. So it's it's frustrating for us to see. It's, it's you, frustrating you for us to see. You 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 have the ability. Someone fix up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I don't know, man. So, so what, what I don't do you know, do with that? So what, what do you do with that? Because I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm, 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 I'm I done. I don't know what needs to be done. I don't know what needs to be done. I don't know what needs to be done. Yeah, and these decisions, they do cost us a lot. No lie. Because look, talking about the Manchester United game, Oh, everyone saw that, and I was even chilling there, relaxed, saying, "No, nah, it won't. It, it won't be a goal. They're going to rule it out." Only for yeah. the, for them to be like, "No, yeah. it's a goal." I'm like, "So what is VR there for then? I mean, how does someone use their hand to sort of because the the ball is floating? He wouldn't have yeah. been able to cross that ball the way he crossed it or pass the ball. So him mm -hmm. using his hand." Even if it was intentional or unintentional, but he did. And that assisted him in, in, in passing the ball for, for his team to end up scoring. But then what did the ref say? No, it's a goal. So now, and the funny part is that in Africa, we don't have VR as of yet. They, they are using it for AFCON, but we are also seeing some certain decisions that are made. So it's one of those things yeah. of yeah. how do they improve it? You, you all, always do the same thing. We improve uh, certain rules when the season ends, but then at the end of the day, it's still the same thing. What education referees need to get for them to stop making these reckless decisions? I mean, I mean, what happened with Man United? I mean, someone someone might come and say, I'm, I'm a sour Man United fan because I was knocked out. But looking at what really happened, any fan of any team will be as pissed off as, as, I, as I was. And as I, I'm still pissed off right now. You know, you know, when I was watching that game, I, when 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 that goal came came through, I I, I didn't even think they they needed to go to VAR. Because any stupid referee could have ruled that off. Mm. I don't mm. get I don't get. You see what I don't understand? Why do we have Why do we have that TV on the on the pitch? When you have three 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 grown ups sitting right in front of the screen. And you have a microphone on your ears mm. to say to say, okay, this has been ruled out. Mm. Just just give the guy you you guys are three on top. Yeah. Give the guy the answer. Say, okay, this is not a penalty. Move on. 
Why does mm. he need to? Why do you need to say no? You you gotta make your own decision and go to the TV. What 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 are they doing there? there? What's their job? Yeah, the because the they team? are feed pass specialists. Yeah, exactly. they should come up with the decision. Exactly, the referee in the, the, referee pitch, in the pitch is job. His job is, is, to, is, is, is to give the decision on the pitch. On the pitch. Yeah, because the way yeah, I see now, it like, now I feel like uh, uh, the new way of match fixing. Way of match fixing. Because the, what happened during Man United game, that's a clear handball. Clear handball. And you don't need to negotiate. Like Mama said, you don't need to go to VAR to check. No. You could see that that's a handball. So why that's now a... they, they call on the ref to check on the monitor and then he has to decide. We, there are specialists, there are three people there behind checking everything. They know FIFA law. Maybe they read that book every day. So they're supposed to say, no, man, that's a handball. Finish. Finish. And then Finish. we'll watch that game easy. So I, but what else you can do? Maybe <laughs> maybe someone bet a lot in that game and me, that rape we're going to get some commission during that game. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's uh, but, 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 but but I think I think it's uh you guys I think at Chelsea as well, mommy, because I know you're a Chelsea fan. You guys also have a problem with this referee. I know um he was he, he also refereed um obviously he's the he's the one who 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 said who decided that it's not uh it's not a handball because I think Chelsea also have a history with, with him and you know he even before VAR came, he was very, very um I'd say he was always getting a lot of decisions wrong, you know, um, and especially these easy ones. Not we're not talking about hard decisions, like no, whether to give someone a yellow card, red card. You know, he was very inconsistent as well. You know, you'd find that he'd give another team uh, uh, cards and then he'd leave others. You know, and then he'd do vice versa. You know, so I don't know, man. Like. But the the challenge, the challenge with, with I think the, some of these English referees, they so certain decisions they make, it's not like it's not mm. like something they think of. Yeah, because you must know England, the supporters they play a big role in the in the referees' decisions. Mm. Some 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 stadiums you go in England, the referees will make will make a decision according to the reaction of the of the public of the stadium. Mm. But bringing VAR into the into the plate should change all of it. <laughs> yeah, like but, I want but, to add actually but, what he's saying, because when I was watching the Man United game, <laughs> I, I I agree with what he's saying because immediately uh, they scored, the opposition team scored against Man United. The fans went crazy, the players went crazy, and they were they were celebrating. In my head, I was like, it's not a goal. But the way they, they were celebrating and how the ref uh, just kept quiet and did not really rule out that goal. Something in me was like, somehow they'll let this goal, goal stand. And they actually yeah. did. So I do agree what he's saying, where it's like at times the, the fans play a part. If the fans are pissed off with the decision, he changes his mind somehow. I don't know. And with the vibe being there, it's like, how do you make that type of mistake? It should be and, easy. You and, go, you check the screen. And, the guys have been in the in, in the room, the the VAR uh, room. They are checking. It's about two, three guys checking or or more, but you're still making the, the same wrong decision. Mm, so and, I really and, do and, not understand. And it's not the first time. I mean, yeah. I've seen when I'm watching the English Premier League, the yeah. actual yeah. Uh, what's this pundits who are talking about football, and even former referees. When they get there, they'll say, no, the referee made the right decision, even though everyone else sees that it was the wrong decision. So yeah, it's like, yeah, why yeah, is yeah. they are there in the first place? You see, you see, you also, see, you see also, it plays on role, plays role, 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 role one way. Because, because you, you understand, you understand it, England, it, 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 they, they said, they, they uh, said, they 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 said, for for so they're always looking for that they're always looking for upsets mm. 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 
because that's the that's the, that's, the, that's just how the FA Cup is. Now, uh, any they, they wanna English English people are very they they very they very like stuck into their culture in a way. Mm. They they will if, if the FA Cup if they play the FA Cup throughout the season and there's just have you seen any any FA Cup year where there's 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 not a small team a League League Two or League One team that knock out the Premier League team? Every mm. year there's one. Every mm. year there's one. And I remember when Mourinho was at Manchester United, he got knocked out in the FA Cup by one small team. I can't remember. Oh, it was Tottenham. Because they created that, they created that sense of mm. of underdogs knocking out one big team. They they like that because it's in the in their culture. That's why that's mm. why they love FA Cup. Even if it's not fair, they're gonna create that little bit. They it it felt like the West Ham game was gonna be the one, but it didn't yeah. happen because yeah. West Ham West Ham came came to the game. But it's the big teams that struggle to, to to finish off the small teams. They always create that small, you know, surprise package to make the FA Cup. Because you must know, FA Cup is the is the oldest cup competition in the world. Yeah, and they yeah. want to keep that. The way people talk about it all over the world, they want to keep that spice going on. That's why England are like that. They want to have that. Okay. Manchester United got knocked out by, by Middlesbrough or whatever. That's what they're looking for. But that team, in 10 years' time, they can play Manchester United 10 times, they won't win. <laughs> but just because it's the FA Cup. If they play if they play against Sunday, Manchester United will give them 4 or 3-0. Mm. But it's the FA Cup. It's just that tension they have in the FA Cup that people talk about it. I I listened to to David Moyes before he played that team, the 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 the, the, the match interview. This 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 woman said West Ham was knocked out of this competition by this same team, 1986 or something. Yeah. David Moyes said we're not going to give them the chance to knock us out because we're here to win the football game, and that's very yeah. important. Because if you come if you come trembling, like. Chelsea almost got knocked out. That team missed a penalty last minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. This is what they want. The, people need to understand this is what the FA Cup is about. If United was playing a Premier League team, that, that penalty is out. They take it away. Yeah. That yeah. goal, that goal is never stood. It will never stand. These mm. are the things we need to understand in the culture. English people have. That's the, that's the spice of the FA Cup. Because hey, that's that other want. teams expensive. Huh? And other teams expensive. So you know, um, I mean, I guess it is what it is, man. And uh, and I do think it's it, it is like that because. I mean, you can't explain how like they, they, they just ignore obvious decisions at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, man. And obviously, we we in turmoil as a club because we needed this FA Cup. So, you know, as a, as a Manchester United fan, you know, I, I feel hard done. You know, yeah, well, you're not gonna we... win the league. You're not gonna win the league, so you <laughs> might as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No man. Um, obviously, the guys here are also like um, they're also Man United fans, and you know we're, we're we're actually about to discuss this thing where there's the the, the structure, the structure of, of of Man United is just in tatters at the moment. Players have too much power. Uh, they have more power than the than the manager. The board is also interfering in making footballing decisions as well. Yeah. Another factor, and like there's there's this sort of power play between the board and the manager, where the the board tells the players, um, no, you can go and rest, you can take a few days off, and yeah. then the manager, um, when the manager goes to the player, 
um, in fact, the board goes to the to the play, to the manager and tells the manager the player said he wanted to take days off. You know what I'm saying? So basically, you have the board being the one who dictate and saying that, oh no, this guy said this and that, and then they come back to you with second hand information where they twist it, and then yeah. it makes it a fight between the manager and the player now because information is is is, is um, lost in between them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. This is what I feel like when we won't come back anytime soon because we've always said that if you cannot have your house in order where your manager is the most powerful person outside mm -hmm. of the board, yeah. you cannot have your players above the manager because you'll never be successful. You're wasting your time. If you're yeah. running an organization like that, then you, mm -hmm. you, you might as well give up, you know, because as many Manchester United fans who've been saying this, how do these guys run the club the way they're running it? They would never run their businesses that way. They would never run their businesses that way. So how, 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 how like, I know, I know you're going to be manager soon. You, you're going to be one of the managers at this. And, and you told me once that uh, um, there's a team that you almost coached and you turned them down because the structure wasn't right, right? Yeah. So, you know, you, the importance of that, you know, please, please do share the importance of having structure at a footballing club for it to be successful. No, you see the, you see the challenge we have is, 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 it's more like the footballers has power. That's that's been like that for the past twenty years probably. Who play a power? It's it's happened, mm. but mm. it's it's important to have a. To have the how can I say it? Uh, to have the um, the character as a manager mm. to to take over the, the board member. If you see if you see coaches like Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, Jose Mourinho, mm. Ancelotti, Thomas Tuchel, these are the currently the best coaches in the world. Right. Yeah. Currently, currently, they are the best. If you see those those coaches, if you take Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp, mm. which are the one that's that's been sitting in one one position for a longer time, the other three I mentioned: Mourinho, Ancelotti, and Tuchel. They've been changing mm. clubs. They've been changing clubs. Mourinho doesn't even stay three years in one club. Two years mm. gone because of his character. If he's not happy with the board member, how they do things, he leaves. Ancelotti, same. Thomas Tuchel was fired because of what happened to PSG. He wanted to do something else. They wanted to to do other things. The character of the mm. manager plays a big role in that in that sense. So if you if you as a manager don't have the character to 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 control to say to the board man, I'm the boss. It's never mm. going to happen. It's never gonna happen because the players are gonna come. They're gonna do what they want, and the manager, the, the board member will support them. That's just how it is. Yeah. yeah. But if you stamp your authority from the from day one and say, "Look, the, your first team talk, your first talk when you come being presenting as a manager, is important. Mm -hmm. Your first team talk, you come and say, "Listen, first of all, I'm I'm delighted to be here." I'm the boss. Mm. Whatever decision you have to talk to the board member, come to me, because the True. players players play for you if they if they if they if, if they can trust you. Yeah. If they can trust you as a manager, they will give everything to you, for you. Mm. But if they come and they feel like ah, oh, this manager is a shaky guy, he's you know his confidence is low. You must know your personality define 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 you. A, how how your team will be. Mm. If you have a weak personality, your team will be weak. That's just how it is. Many teams they were many saying teams they were saying Arsenal is soft because, is soft because, because of the manager. Of the manager. Is but, but that's, that's, but who that's, that's who after the marriage. 
and he was the one and that he was the, the one that was playing, playing good football in, in good football in, in England, mm. like passing football, like passing football. But mm. that mm. that but that's 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 who he was. Who he, was. he got successful. He got successful because. They respect him, but they respect him, but because he do what he do what he do. Yeah, yeah. Then let then let then let then let then let on Cape Mourinho, a a guy that is a guy that is a master technician, and 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 the guy and 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 the guy that is difficult to do. Difficult to do. So, so every so, manager, so every come, manager with, come, with, come with their own, come with their own luggage. With their own luggage. Hmm. You understand? You understand? So hmm. when the board, so when the board members take, take, take over, take over, and take over, and, 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 and don't allow the coach to be the board, it's all up to the coach. It's all up to the coach. Yeah. Yeah. No man. No, the, problem you made, the problem you made. It's 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 them it's, not one to change. Not one to they change. Want the problem. They want the problem. But but they not willing to they change. not willing that's, to that's change. Where that's that's where now have to come in and take charge and take charge. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what I'm saying? Because you're not gonna get change. You're not gonna get change from people. Change change from people. people. Because you cannot tell me. Because you cannot tell me. These guys have been diagnosed with problems, and they're just trying to cut. They're just trying to cut problems. You understand? So you understand? So you cannot have you cannot have solve the problem. You need to you need to the right way or the right way or don't do it. It's that simple. It's that simple. I don't know if you. I don't know if you. If you Pep Guardiola's tweet blocks. Sometimes they put it on. They Sometimes they put it on. They put some stick on YouTube. You must always listen. You must always listen to what they say. Yeah. Yeah. There's one footage I watch. Players come in. Players come in. I think they had that. They were one. I think they had that. They were one nil down. And he said. What and he said, said, what said, the first thing up. he said, he said, shut up. I'm the, 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 I'm or oh, can you please talk okay, you your mic? Your mic your okay, okay, okay. Thanks. So that's that's um, that's the that's the coach that's the coach that has control of his dressing room. Yeah. Because I remember I I remember back in the days I played with I played under Kevin Johnson. I don't know if you you guys know Kevin. You guys know should know Kevin Johnson. Yeah. As a coach, we came. Yeah. I think there was a game we played Pirates. We were we were we were not losing actually. It was zero zero. But Pirates Pirates was was having probably twenty six shot on target. Mm. Pirates was was almost burying us. And and um everybody was pissed like we were playing so bad Super Sport and Super Sport. <laughs> by my time, we we always beat Pirates. Pirates is one yeah. team that that never gave us a problem. But that mm. game, they were like all on the stadium. They were like giving us so much problem. Mm. But because of Kevin Johnson's way of coaching, he's 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 got a soft character. We got we got battled. Pirates were all over us. Mm. We come to the dressing rooms. Leboham Manyama and Tuso Pala. They were fighting. Blah 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 blah. I'm 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 I was on the bench. Eh? I was on the bench. The coach was just standing there doing the. And I was one of the senior players. I just stood up and said, "Say, hey, both of you, shut the fuck up and sit down." <laughs> because of you, we are. You both of you are in the pitch. You're playing shit. That's why we, we, we Paris is almost killing us. Mm. Make your feet talk. Don't open your mouth. There's a boss here. You shouldn't yeah. talk. Your job is to do your job in there in the pitch. There's a boss here. Mm. That's his job. Yeah. 
that's the that's the moment Kevin Johnson. I gave him the I almost gave him the 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 leverage to talk as a boss. Mm. What Gavin Hunt? Do you think Gavin Hunt's team? You will come there or Pixel's team? You will come there halftime and two players are buffing each other. No chance. Because it's their character. They have that strong character. Mm. You don't come and doesn't matter who you are. Pizzo's team, we were big players. Teko Modisi, Surprise Moriri, myself, Lafo, Mahuta. We had, we had a ton of big players. Nobody talks. When we go in, everybody keep quiet. Pizzo, only mm. Pizzo talks. But this is, this, is, this is what I'm saying. I said, as a coach, for you to, to, for you to, be, to, to own your, your own dressing room, you need to, to make it you need to make the players understand I'm the boss from day one. Mm. Mm. The minute you let that lose, it's going to be like that. Players are going to get power, power over you. How many coaches in South Africa do you see has been recognized as top coaches? <laughs> How many? It's not many. Yeah. It's, a very it's not few, many. If you, few, if, you, few. If, you, if, you, if you take Pizzo and Gavin Hunt, yeah, it's it's probably Benny that comes that comes is the young one that comes there. Name another yeah. one. Just name another sure. one. They've been they, they uh, never mind. They've been good coaches. Yeah. They've been good coaches, but the the character they have make the is the reason why they don't people don't recognize them as successful coaches. Mm. I'm not talking about I'm coaches, talking about you know, coaches <laughs> that been that's been before my time. Like yeah. the one that won Pirates and Papich, those ones. There's, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about my generation. Pizzo, Gavin, those ones. There's not f- there's few. Very few. That there is another that, one, though. That, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Tisa. Yeah. The one who's yeah. uh, an assistant now with um, uh, Carlos Squeros. Because from the character that when I see him, is the type of coach who does not take any shit. And as much as mm-hmm. I, I, I never supported a, a team, wait, he did coach Pirates, actually. He was the type of coach, but at times I feel like um the structures that are above uh, coaches or managers are the ones that end up undermining the managers. Because if you look at Pirates, I'm a Pirates supporter, right? We've heard it so many times yeah. of the structures that undermine the coaches, right? And if I'm to use Man United, uh, Man United as an example, their board is the one in, uh, that ends up undermining the structures of you know the coaches or the manager. Because if you give power to the players to undermine the coach or the manager, mm-hmm. what more can the coach or the manager say? If a player like Maguire, who plays for Man United, feels that as much as he's the coach, but I can speak before he has spoken. And I can go and 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 um and get interviewed as much as I'm playing crap in the field. Like you said, adding on what you were saying, Mama, you said let your feet speak on the field. But Maguire has not been letting his, his feet speak on the field. But yet he goes and he he's getting interviewed, talking about how uh, the team needs to play better. As a player, before you're a leader, he's crap. And then he then goes on to speak as a captain, as a leader of men. He's not leading anyone because he's not even able to play uh, as a player, as a center back. You know, so it's like already the structures have undermined, have given power to the players, for players to to feel that as much as you're, you're the coach, I can tell you where to get off. If I'm playing crap, I'll still be be, be picked because those are uh, if if I look at Man United and Pirates, those are similar things that I've seen, where a certain player has been playing crap and as his fans see, but yet he still plays. Rashford, Maguire would always get get picked as much as they, they were playing crap, and it's like, what must happen? Because I look at the current coach that coaches Manchester, for example, he seems like the kind of coach who doesn't take any crap, but the problem is. If the structures already have been ruined, a Man United that was coached by Ferguson, no player would feel that they have so much power. 
But right now, players that are actually playing crap, they feel that they have the power above the coaches and the managers. Mm. You see, uh, like you said, this old mm. German coaches, Germans are known because of discipline. Mm. Germans, they all the German coaches have that authority. But this guy is more like a form, uh, like somebody that form best the best coaches. All the best mm. coaches came from his wing. He, like I said, he wants to dominate. He wants to be the the main man. But one thing you must you must understand, Manchester United plan is not to keep this guy as a head coach. Mm. That's why your Maguire's they've been playing shit. Maguire's I can't I still can't believe he's the most expensive defender in the world. He doesn't for me he doesn't deserve to be Manchester United. Manchester United is a big club. He doesn't deserve yeah. to be Manchester United captain. I would me you see the reason why coaches like I said it before you came in again. Mourinho, the reason why he didn't last there because of his character. Because he he doesn't accept bullshit from the board member. He's that kind of coach. Mm. Never mind what people say about Mourinho. I still respect Mourinho. Because I believe he's the only he's the only coach that came from nothing when Porto team and won the Champions League with that Porto team. Mm. Mm. Pep Guardiola, wherever he's been, he's got the best teams. He coached three teams. Barcelona, that Barcelona team. Even you can win the Champions League with that team. Xavi, Iniesta, Ronaldinho, Messi, Eto. What what else do you need? Cherry Henry. What else do you need to win to win a Champions League? You have the best players in the world then. Yeah. Then he went to Bayern. He didn't win the Champions League. Bayern was in Germany, they win the, the league every year. Only Dortmund challenged them sometimes. They win the league every year. Then he went to Manchester City. City has been the last decade has been the best league, the best team in the in the Premier League. The last decade they mm. won five Premier League in ten years. Mm. Mm. So he's got is ne- nobody said Pep Guardiola is not a good coach. He's a he's a terrific coach. He's what is the best in the world right now. Mm. But bottom line is the board member can be like Africa is completely different to Europa. Like you said, Roger Dasa is a good coach. He's a very good coach. But Pirates board member is 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 so strong for Roger Dasa to do to 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 dictate. If Pizzo goes to Pirates tomorrow, he will decide who's gonna play. Mm. If Gavanant goes to Pirates tomorrow, why do Gavanant is the second most Kept like most uh, successful coach in South Africa. Why does Paris not take Kevin Hunt? Why does Sundowns? Kevin was close to sign for Sundowns. Why? Because he wanted things to be done his own way. Mm. Sundowns is not even like that. Sundowns, the board doesn't get involved. Motsepe doesn't care. Motsepe, as long as you win titles, Motsepe doesn't dictate coaches. But you need to have character. It all comes down with character. If Benny takes over Pirates, which I'm, I'm pretty sure is going to happen, if Benny goes to Pirates, you will see Pirates will will will, will challenge Sundowns. Mm. But but for that to happen, for that to happen, they need the character. These these European coaches, these these boys don't. These boys are powerful. These young players, they are powerful. European coaches, they don't know the culture of Africa. Mm. Swallows, Chiefs, Pirates, they're traditional clubs owned by traditional people, local people. Mm. They want the they want the football to be done their own way. If you come mm. and you let them you, from your first talk, you tell them I'm the boss, let me deal with the team the way I wanna do it, you will be successful. Mm. I mean pirates have Pirates have quality players. When I watch Pirates team, when I see Pirates team, I'm like, why do I under challenging Sundowns? Why are they fourth in the log? Why are they third in the log? They should be second, three points behind Sundowns. Chiefs, same, same things. When I watch Stellenbosch, second, I'm like, what's happening? Stellenbosch. 
<laughs> How many people is in Stellenbosch? <laughs> no, man. What's happening? Stellenbosch, second in the log. Where's Paris and Chiefs? <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I when I watch it, I'm like, no way. Benny needs to really take one of these big teams. Stuart yeah. Baxter, Stuart Baxter is a good coach. But these coaches, they're getting old. You need to bring fresh blood. Somebody, what player inspires? Come and tell to Benny, I've done more than you. What? Benny won the Champions League. Benny played in mm -hmm. Europa. Benny earned millions more than. Twice, three, four times more than you. What can you tell Benny? <laughs> they, these coaches they bring, those Pirates players don't know them. <laughs> Benny's got character. If I go to yeah. Pirates, if I if Benny if Benny is a, is the head coach of Pirates, I'm the assistant coach. What Pirates players can tell me? I played in Bundesliga. I earned more than more money than them. <laughs> yeah. This is this is how you form a club. This is how you mix a club. Pizza, you can't tell a pizza mm. nothing. I remember I had a fight with him. I said to him, he said to me, Mame, I know you are a big player, but I've got big players here. I said to him, which one played in Europe? Give me one. You have big players here. I said, which one played in Europe? He said, yeah, you got it right. He had the same problem. He said to me, I had the first, same fight with Zen Musa. He said to him one day when they were at but sometimes Zen Musa said to him, I'm a better player than you. Pizza said, but I played in Europe. I played Europa Cup. Why did you play? In the PSL only. <laughs> that's what I that's what I'm saying. Character. That's character. Mm. That's why Pizza and Zen mm. Musa had that, that that electric relationship. Because mm -hmm. bottom line is the reality is there. The reality is pirates, it's a team. I always have a soft, soft, soft spot for Pirates, despite not joining them. Mm. I chose Sundowns because the deal was more lucrative and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But my one of my best friends is a big Pirates supporter and he lives in, in, in Soweto and I, we always go watch Pirates. Every time I go there, they said, Mama Young's moving to Pirates. <laughs> but it never it never happened. It never happened. I just went to watch and I get the VIP and I sit there and I talk to Paris people. Mm. I I love this. I love that club. But mm. for me to see Paris not winning titles in Chiefs, like it's it's not good enough. Mm. It's not good enough. One coach at Paris, if you stay there two years, three years, you don't win any silver, you must go. Yeah. As, that's how simple it is. Pirates should be there challenging your Zamalek, your Al Ali, semi final Champions League, you know, challenging the league. You play teams like small teams, Stellenbosch. Pirates should beat them 3 0, gone. Next mm. next stop. Mm. When when I was in the best team, when I was at Sundowns, we when 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 Sundowns won the league, we we started this process. Pizzo started this process. I was one of the first players to came. This our generation, we come. We I remember Pizzo, like I said, the character of the coach Pizzo brought it to us something that we we believe that we were the best, because when we come yeah. Pizzo, when we come and the opposite opposition team has the the ball, Pizzo, Pizzo is sitting on the bench and say, hey, go get the ball, hey, mm. take the ball, man. We went to press, boom, boom, boom. We get the ball. We didn't mm. want the team to have the ball. That's how stubborn Pizzo made us. Mm. So that's why we were winning. When Chiefs were 11 points ahead of, of us, everybody thought, ah, oh, Chiefs is winning the league. 11 points. Mm. This is what mm. I'm talking about. If Chiefs had the coach like Gavin Hunt, then we'll never catch them. They would grind result. They would, they, they would grind result until they win the league. 11 points. If Manchester City is 11 points ahead of Chelsea is gone. Chelsea can't win the league. Liverpool yeah. has a slight chance. 11 points in mm. Europe, you're gone, my friend. In the big leagues, 11 points. No chance. You're not coming back. Where do you see 11 yeah. points? When Manchester United have 11 points ahead of you in top of the league by Alex, the Alex Ferguson time, you yeah, think you're going to come back? No, we knew he was gone. We knew, no we knew we were going to win. No yeah. chance. No chance. I was I'm I'm still surprised how Sundance won that big. 
11 points. Chiefs is just Chiefs is drawing and losing to Polokwane. Small teams. <laughs> That's why this these things need to change. You need to you need yeah. a coach that comes because you must know Ivan Koza is a is a is a very demanding man. But if he get a Benny Makati in that head head coach of that team, you will see a huge difference. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. What's Amazulu? Amazulu is a small club, man. Let's face it. Benny doesn't want to coach Amazulu. Yeah. Benny doesn't want to coach Amazulu. Doesn't want to coach Amazulu. His first assignment he, at, at, at Cape Town City, he went to the cup final. Mm. His second year, he won the cup. Mm -hmm. That tells you everything about the coach. Pirates want a challenge. Go get Benny. Leave these European coaches. Go get Benny. Bring him there. He's he was he's a legend of the of South African football. He has done it better than anybody. He's a legend mm -hmm. of pirates. That pirates team Benny was at when they when they completed the triplet. Mm -hmm. That pirates team, bro. They we had super sport had us. We had a strong team. We were top of the log. We were leading mm -hmm. by was five six six points pirates were second behind us pirates was the only team that was close to us three points we came to orlando yeah. stadium they 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 beat us three zero they took the they took the top of the league they didn't leave that top of the league until the end that's the team mm -hmm. if you want to be if you want to be successful you must go and say okay i'm going to beat all the small teams when i meet sundowns i'm going to beat sundowns that's how i that's mm -hmm. how you take over not mm, when you when you go to when you go to meet sundowns you're thinking oh shit it's sundowns you're never gonna win no chance nah it's tough like i really hope that i've been hoping for this for makati before he even went to to amazon for him to go to to pirates actually but now pirates was not really looking to to, to get him i mean because i could have just said i want you come because mm. If the coach that we had, as much as he, the German coach, the one that is unknown, as much as he won a, a net bank, but he was not really playing the type of football that Pirates is known for. And like you said, Pirates does need a character. Someone's going to get in there and say, hey, I'm the boss. Hey, I won't listen to any of you, player or staff or whatever. I'm the boss. And those are the type of people that we need. You know, if we were to have a, a Benny McCarthy uh, as a coach for Pirates, I'm telling you, in the next two, three years, I feel like Pirates would dominate. But at the moment, nah, at the moment, very, the guy who's even coaching, I'm even shocked how he even got the job. There's what, two, three coaches? I'm even confused. Like, the whole structure is confusing me. I'm a, I'm a Pirates fan, but I'm confused myself because I'm like, what is happening? What is the structure? Who is the actual coach? Who is the assistant? I'm I'm confused actually. You know, it seems you know, the way I see it, the way I see. it's you know when it comes to pirates, pirates maybe the board want to take over. They want to tell the coach what to do. So that's why maybe they couldn't approach Benny because the way I see it, Benny, he wants to do his own things. He wants to sign the player that he wants. He wants to do his own thing. And when it comes to pirates, I, I don't think a coach have a big say. Because may, maybe Ivan Koz is the one who signs the, the player, not the coach. So, and if you can yeah. from Ben, from even from Cape Town City, you could see that this guy wants to sign his own players. He doesn't want you yeah. to tell him, you, you, like he doesn't want a coach or president to bring his own players. He wants the player that he wants. So, like Mama yeah. said, a coach needs to have a character. So, that's why maybe Pirates, Chiefs, they don't want to take Ben, because Ben doesn't take nonsense. He wants yeah. to do his own thing. So that's why Amazul were able to take him because he wants to do his own thing. He doesn't want any coach. Like, if, if you can check Kaiser Chiefs, maybe Kaiser Chiefs, we, we also know that Kaiser Chiefs, they, they like to buy players, like buy one, get one free. And those yeah. players, not the, the player that the coach wants. Like, Bobby do does his own transfers, everything. It's not like what the player, what the coach wants with the team. So that's why I feel like then to go to Pirate would be, unless he can go to Pirate, unless Ivan Cos is willing to let Benny do his own thing, like Sundown. Yeah. 
Like sat down to what they did to Pito. They let him run the team as as it is. He did his own thing. Like where when he ended up beefing with Alex Chakwan because he said that there's so many people that doesn't want him in the Sundowns board. Because he was avoiding this thing of you bring your own people. You can't be a director or one of the board members, but you want to bring your own players. Peter wants his own players. He doesn't want you to sign players for him. He's doing his job, he yeah. will deliver. And that's what he did. So that's why I luckily signed him because they saw his character because he believes in the players that he wants. He doesn't want you to sign players for him. So yeah, that's why I feel like for Pirates to have been, they they must be willing to not get involved with football. Just let Benny do his own thing. Uh, that's how I see it for me on my side. Man. Because you see, you see, when I, I remember when I went to, to Sundown Speed, so many the the board the board said said no, we can't sign Mame because it doesn't fit the this the system we want to play. Mm. Because because that's what they believe. But but uh, when I spoke, when Pizzo called me, I was in Norway when the deal was done, actually. And Pizzo said to me, I want you in my team. I said, but you, you guys play Tiki Taka and I'm a target man. I play, I play kick and rush. Mm -hmm. Pizzo said, I brought you because of the Champions League, because I know you have African Champions League experience. And I brought mm -hmm. you to, to do that. And don't worry about what the board member think, or what Sundown supporters think. And he knew my character. He knew how I, I I work. So, so if like 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 so so said, when you come in, into the club, you can be on your way to the club, and they already signed two players that that might not mm -hmm. be in your system, that might not be in your in your in your in your plans. You yeah. you, it doesn't change anything. If they're not in your plans, they're not in your plans. How many times do you go to club as a footballer and the coach comes and said, said to you, you're not, you're not part of my plan. I had the same experience when I left Sundowns and I went to Cyprus. The coach that brought me there was fired after four games. You know how these, these clubs are. And the guy, the guy lost well one game in four, won one, drove two. They fired him. The, the new coach that came, the first thing he told me, he said, you're not in my plan. I said to him, I said to him, let's keep it professional because I'm a professional. Mm. I'm a, I'm going to, I'm going to train. I'm going to train the way I, the way I, 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 I normally do. And I'm a professional. Even if I'm not in your plan, I'm part of this team. So treat mm. me well. He said, he said, I'm going to treat you like a professional. That guy, I changed his mind about how, how he thought. He thought, no, I wanted to play low block and I wanted fast strikers to go to run behind the defense. He plays he plays in a league where our team is one of the best. It was one of the best teams in the league. Where are you gonna get low block? You're gonna play low block against smaller teams that sits. He end up he ends up playing me every single game. Despite saying I'm not part of his team. I, every time I came on, the team is losing, I, I bring the equalizer. Every time I come on, we need a goal, I'm the one created a goal or scoring a goal. At the end, he didn't have a choice. Because he's an old-fashioned coach, he, he believed, no, I wanted to play this low block and get the hit teams on the counter-attack. doesn't work like that. You're not going to play teams every week that's going to push you and uh, push you into your goal. You're going to play weaker teams. So he didn't understand. He didn't understand the whole concept. He just spoke so quick. Before you assess your team, you must watch your team first. Watch the players. Watch which, which player, which quality do they have. And once the player get the confidence of the coach, it's easy, it's easy for the players to play for the coach. And this is what you get from coach, coaches with character. Benny, your Benny, or Kevin, your Pizzo. They will, that's what you get. Because you know, you know, this is, uh, this coach 
has has strong belief for me and i'm going to deliver for him that's just how it is nah true true let's just and hope that true. as time goes we might see pirates bringing in someone like Benny who has that character because looking at I was speaking to my old man the other day because he's also a, a pirate supporter and I was like for the past three seasons if not four pirate has been losing the league by always drawing by drawing nine ten times in a season I'm like how does a team with so much firepower and so many great players draw nine ten times and get beat by sundowns mm. look at this season alone sundowns has beat pirates i think like four times already league cup sundowns just gets in there we, we, we lose and it's like what's happening who has the type of character to then push these players and give them the right confidence to go and play because pirates actually has good players up front mid defense they do but it's like the coaches themselves don't know which players to actually play and play the right setup and give the players the confidence to actually because they're, they're, from what you're saying in terms of character the coaches don't have the character to motiv- motivate the players so it, it's like sending anyone to just get there and tell the players what to do but they don't have the character they don't have the character and the respect but someone like benny who is well respected who has achieved so much it's easy for that player to get in there as a coach uh, and tell them what he wants. And no one is going to question him. But right now, I feel like the coaches that uh, Pirates Pirates have, they get questioned a lot by the players, even though you won't hear it in the media or whatever. But I I, I suspect or, or assume that they get questioned. Because, I mean, what are you going to tell me as a coach who's never really achieved uh, a lot as a coach or, or as a player? What are you going to tell me? How are you, are you expecting me to respect you if you've never really achieved so much that would allow me to respect you and give you that, you know, that standing? So, yeah, I don't even really know what uh, was this uh, Koza, Ivan Koza is thinking because he's, he's the owner of the team. And looking at the fact that, like you said earlier, that Pirate hasn't been winning any trophies. Five years is a long, like it's longer than five years already. It's a long time to not win a league for a pirate or for a team like Hazel Chiefs. It's a long time to not win a league. And it's like you, you play a league every season. What are you doing? How are you not reaching that number one spot? We used to have pirates as number one or Chiefs as number two or the other way around. And you knew that those teams are performing. The coaches that were there were of the character that pushed them enough to actually perform. We knew every season, Pirates, Chiefs, top eight. But the past few seasons, Pirates and Chiefs, at times, it's been hard for them to even get into the top eight. And it's like, what's happening? So, uh, it's, yeah, it's confusing. The, you see, you see when, when on, my, on my Swallows day, at the two first season I played for Swallows, Sundowns dominated. They won two, this, this season two, this, the league two, two years in a row. But it wasn't a very dominant sundowns. They they had quality players, obviously. Yeah. They had quality players. Even even Swallows finished second that year, that second year. In the first year we finished fourth. At, and I remember we beat Pirates in Orlando, the old Orlando, three one. But the 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 Papic team, Papic had the Pirates then. But mm-hmm. when 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 I when I used to watch that Pirates team. Bro, it was it was painful to to play against them. Like they will they will attack you from every every part of the pitch. Like you, we were defending for Pirates Pirates Swallows. We were defending for our lives because Papich came with a different style of football. That's how that's how we know Pirates in South Africa. Pirates is the team that attacks. Yeah, I don't see Pirates any. I don't see Pirates in any different way. Pirates does Pirates doesn't defend. Pirates attacks. Now you bring a, you bring a coaches that brings Pirates to. A, but let's face it, the Pirates team we the Pirates has Vango top scorer of the league. Mm. 
when you have a striker that scores goals for you, get the defense, get the back four that can keep us nil, nil. You guys have you. They have Otto. That that guy is such. A, that guy is a, such a such a threatening win, winger. You have a striker that yeah. can score goals. Get get two good wingers around him. Mm. Just play for four three three. That's the Paris system. Paris doesn't play with two strikers. Paris play with one striker, two wingers that are like strikers. Mm. That's the Paris way. Three midfielders, good on the ball. Press the teams. These small teams, you can't draw with them. You home and away. You go to their home. You come. You show. You show that I'm a I'm an Orlando Pirates. I'm here to win the football game. Finish. Mm. Mm. And Pirates has Pirates and Chiefs. They have that luxury. Wherever they go in South Africa, they have supporters. What else do you need to win a football game when you have quality players and people that supports you? What else do you need? Look where you look where you're failing. Look where you're failing. If you if you if you need a good goalkeeper, buy, sign a quality good goalkeeper. Spend money on it. It's 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 better to sign to to sign three top players than to sign six average players. Six average players. The money you will spend on six average players, you can spend on three quality players. That will make a difference in your team. That's how you yeah. sign teams. You don't. You, you Spiders is not like Sundowns. You can't just come and buy twelve players one season. You can't do that. <laughs> so what you can do is sign three quality players. You know, you know they're gonna deliver. I was listening to Sky Sports News. One guy said something very important. He said the reason why Liverpool has been consistent and Salah and Mane has been consistent, they don't get injured. When last did you hear Salah and Mane got injured? They don't get injured, those two. They don't get injured. Sign players that you know they're going to play the whole season. You have a good striker, top scorer of the league. That's a base. That's a good base. Mm. Get a number six that's very disciplined. That you know when they sit in front of the back four, your back four is safe. Get some expert, the core of the team, goalkeeper, number six, number 10, number nine. These four, mm. you need to have somebody, people that you trust. The rest, you can you can chop and change. Put youngsters, put yeah. some experienced players, chop and change. Those four, they must play every single game. Manage them, rest them. That's how you. That's how you win football leagues. When you watch, when I used to watch Pirates, bro, I was like, no, this is not the Pirates I know. The <laughs> Pirates, the Pirates, the Pirates I play against, I play, play against the best Pirates squads ever. Mm. Lucky Lequati, Sang Sangueni, and mm. uh, what was this other defender, Ayanda, and and Happy Jelly. Those four, bro, they were out. It was a battle, ninety minutes mm. battle. Big guys, you they 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 intimidate you. That Pirates team was is that Pirates team that won the treble. They had they had players. They had men. There was no boys. They had men. When I watch when I watch Kaiser Chiefs, when I see Kaiser Chiefs teams, and I see the best player is a young star from what. Kaiser Chiefs development. I'm like, mm. yo, Kaiser Chiefs want to win the league with young, with a young, with a young player being their best player. <laughs> no chance. No chance. Look at Sundowns. Look at Sundowns when they sign players. They sign players that've been doing well for a club for three years, four years. Mm. Mm. That understand the PSL. The guy they signed from from Cape Town City. Experienced player, good player, and he's gonna play a huge role. Kermit Erasmus. How yeah. many years has he done it in the league? How many years yeah. has he done it in Europe? So many he's not, he's not, been he's not even playing too. regularly. You must sign players that can make a difference. Instead of going sign Mickey Mouse players. <laughs> players that, that can make you win 
that's how that's how you win titles. You must sign players that can make you win. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and and then now you can you can go so. I know every time when I listen to to you and Mami on your pod, podcast, like you guys just open my mind. Like, like the way Mami is showing his knowledge when it comes to football, it shows that we really need coaches and players who can deliver. Especially if you want to, like for example, if you want to win a league, you need to have players who are who, who doesn't get injured very often. Like Sundowns, imagine they oh, and if you can check Sundowns, like Mama says, they they usually sign consistent players. Week in, week out, those guys are performing. Yeah, even check it Tralani. He's 33 years yeah. old, but people are complaining like why Sundown signing old player. But that guy is consistent. That yeah. guy delivers. So I guess that what makes Sundowns different with other teams. They like to sign consistent players. And those consistent players, they usually help them win the league. So that's why Sundowns are still dominating. Like, check the kid, Lebong Mukwena or Mukwena from Supersport. That boy has yeah. been consistent. That guy has been a key player for Supersport, and now they've got him. So it means that Sundowns are still going dominating. It will be like Bayern mm. in our league, basically. And they will turn PSL into Farmer's League soon, so I... Just have to accept. Yeah, basically the PSL has become uh, a Bundesliga at the moment because of Sundown's recruitment and financial power, I suppose, in, in, in many aspects. And I think Sundown's, um, the way Patrice Mutzepa is running Sundown, you know, we have to give him credit for that because at the end of the day, you know, they're structured Sundowns. If you check the way they, 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 um, they plan, you know what I'm saying? They plan for signings. They plan for like the next five to 10 years. You know, you can see that there's there's a lot of groundwork that is done. You know, because of signing players, they always sign players that fit the club and the way the coach maybe per se will, will want to play. You understand? Mm-hmm. And they always, yeah. I think they also have someone who, who basically like, um, I would say he looks... He, he, he does research on these players. You know what I'm saying? He does research on the player, then he sees uh, that, they're okay, they're, 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 maybe they're, they're, they're categories that um, the only one players that are mostly, they perform highly at the highest level for so long, they also stay injury-free. Because you have to look, yeah. when, you, when you buy a player, you have to always look at the medical history of the player. And I think a lot of teams don't really go into research with these things. You have to look at his medical uh, yeah, history. True. You need to look at his performance levels levels for how long he'll be able to perform at a certain level. You need to look at the way he plays, what type of systems he can fit in, you know, and he's, as well as his character. Because those are, like, you always have to um, get those right. Even if you don't, you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of millions every season. You don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I, and I think a lot of, like, with us, even at, at, at um, I think the problem is with even with Chiefs. Chiefs is now is, 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 has become Manchester United. You know, with with the way uh, Bobby runs things. You know, he's like right now he's trying to be. They wanna spend when they wanna spend, and they don't spend efficiently. If you look at Chiefs, when they're cheap, they actually look for cheap players who are who are rubbish. You know what I'm saying? They don't look at cheap players who are actually effective on the pitch and who can do a job. And and I yeah. feel like that's where the problem is with, with, with Chiefs. And we're not saying go and sign the most well-known or the, 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 the whole beat of the league, you know, a marquee signing every season. We say in sign mm-hmm. according to how the manager wants to play and sign the right players that fit that system. Yeah. You know, that will spend improve the squad. Yeah. yeah, spend money efficiently. And you can still sustain success. If you do that, you can sustain success. But the problem is that Chiefs, you know, it's, 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 boardroom, uh, it's boardroom battles. You know, it's, 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 it's a power play sort of thing. Kizam Town Jr. and Bobby Mutaun are at lockheads with, with what happens in, in the team. And the manager is stuck in between that battle. 
you know, the manager is, is also um, sort of powerless. I've noticed the manager is very powerless at most times at Chiefs. Even uh, this guy, um, um, Konja, who's the current manager at Chiefs? Who's that guy? Baxter. Yeah, it's yeah, Baxter. Stuart yeah, I'm saying Stuart Baxter. But then the first, his first spell, ne? his first spell, yeah. he was like, he had, he was more hands on. Like they allowed him to be, to have more power, to make a little yeah. bit more, more better decisions. Now his second, mm. in second, second string at the club, like, um, he's, he's sort of like what is happening with Ralph Ragnick at Manchester United. You know, he doesn't ever mm. say, you know, there's player power, there's players who can do what they want to do. You know, the, the, you know, Bobby Mutaung is fiddling too much in, in the football aspects again. And Kizam Taung is now entering into that frame as well. You understand? So the politics are letting the club down. The club is, is just not going to come back. Like I've, I've said with Manchester United, you won't come back until that structure is sorted out. You won't. There's no one who's going to be successful there. Nobody. Mm-hmm. You understand? So, yeah. no, but it's 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 all about how how they how like you said the structure is important, but also the the people around the strength yeah. that structure yeah. mm. because teams like pirates they they control by one person and that's the boss. Yeah, and it 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 it, it can all, always change if they manage to do things right. Mm, things mm. people are respected and do they they they've done they've done things in the in the football world that will make them that make other people respect them. Yeah. So that's just how it's how it's supposed to be. They must just uh, do things right. If you do things right, it's easy. It's very easy. Yeah. So yeah, that's how it is. That's how it is. No, anyways, guys. I'm, guys uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm gonna have to go because I have. Um, I've got a nice shift. It's been a very, <laughs> very important things. But um, um, we, we're going to do it again. We can do it again. No, thank, thanks, thanks for joining us, man. I know you you, you, you had a, a, a busy day, man. And um, I've, yeah, man, I've, 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 I've been busy. Man. I'm, I'm seeing the scenes in Senegal, how they, they landed at the stadium. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's full, 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 full of people. Yeah. Congratulations Thank once again, man. What, 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 thanks, uh, man. Thanks. Yeah, man. Yeah, you guys check you out. Me. All right. Thanks for having me. I'm In out. Time. All right. Yeah, man. Uh, so, so, um, sure, what bro. happened to, to Sims now? I think network issues, bro. Ish, ish, ish. Because I wanted the last half now of the show before we, we close in. We're closing with the Man United issue now and then. We, we, we close it yeah. off because this is the longest stream we've ever done. Uh, yeah. Two hours. <laughs> yeah, two, two hours, hours and 23 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But it was fruitful, man. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. And yeah, we need to continue just to wrap it off. Regarding yeah, our issues on Friday. Man. Let's wrap it off with the Man United thing because I feel like there's still a, we still haven't resolved some things there, man. Hey. Um, in terms of us, yeah. because obviously tomorrow we're playing, man. Tomorrow we're playing, mm. um, we're playing Brentford, I think. Away. Is it away from home? Uh, yeah, I think it's an away. Yeah, I think we're playing away from home. Yeah. Oh, is it Burnley? It's Burnley, not Brentford. Yeah, it's, it's Burnley. Yeah, it's an away game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, hey, game, yeah. Yeah. Kunzi Mandanga, like what? I honestly, I'm telling you now, like I don't have confidence in 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 in, in what we're trying to do, because even the manager of it has no control. Now we hear him that players in the dressing room are fighting amongst each other over the the, the Greenwood situation. Mm. You understand? Uh, there's some players yeah. who feel like Greenwood has been unfairly treated. And they also feel like yeah. their other teammates haven't been as supportive on the on, on the matter that on the um the case that is that is ongoing, obviously. And now we've got Ralph 
with uh, also having his own issues with the players, Lingard, and obviously mm. with Martial before he left. Mm. So, with it, like it's 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 bad for us. Like I'm not gonna lie, I don't, mm. I really don't see the light at the end of the tunnel this season. I think we're done. I think we're done. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, man, it's, you know, when it comes to Manchester, name as a professional football player, first thing that you need to know, man, you shouldn't let external factors infecting affecting the team. You see, because man. At the end of the day, we football players, we professional, you guys need to play, you guys need to deliver every time you go into the pitch. So yes, yeah. Greenwood is going through a rough path, like what's happening between him, rape allegations. So as a professional player, you, sh- you shouldn't focus on the external factors of Greenwood's situation. Just focus yeah. on giving the fans what they want. Because mm. what we want, bro, is for we. We don't care what happened with Greenwood. But Manchester United, they need to win. They yeah. can't, because you know, I feel like since Greenwood, this case thing, maybe they want to use Greenwood as an escape goat, so, and that's not good, man. Manchester, yeah. they need yeah. to deliver, they need to win. And imagine, how can you use Greenwood as an excuse, but you lost against Middlesbrough? Imagine a team from Championship or League One. <laughs> ah, man, that doesn't <laughs> make sense. We have Ronaldo on the pitch, we have Bruno on the pitch, on the pitch. we have Sancho, we have Maguire, we have Varane. Man, we have, we have very class players, man. Maguire, he, he came from Euros, Euros final. Varane, how many times mm. has he won Champions League with Real Madrid? And he won the World Cup. So, man, these guys are professional players, they're senior players, so they're world class players, so they shouldn't be using Greenwood as an excuse. And also, what as a player, man, you must just listen to your coach. Try to listen to the coach, because man, I don't understand what's going on with Manchester. Because in the field, man, this guy, the, you, you even you don't see the structure, man. There's no structure. I just see each player doing their own thing. Yeah, Rashford, Rashford, Rashford's not a team player. You know what, man? I feel like Rashford is a scam. It's a scam. That guy, okay, first season he performed, mm. he made us believe, he scammed us. He made, he made us believe like he's a world class player, but it's not, man. Yeah. I feel yeah. like he's not now. Because, man, he doesn't, his decision makings are so poor. And, and you know what, man, as a player, I feel like you can improve every game. Okay, Rashford, mm. there's some games that doesn't pass Ronaldo. He doesn't pass Ronaldo. But against Middlesbrough, man, he got like two clear chances to pass Ronaldo, but he decides to shoot. Why? At the end of the day, man, we need to win. You're playing for Manchester, and Manchester, man, it's a worldwide team. You can go mm-hmm. in every country, people support Manchester. In SA, we support yeah. Manchester. He must. He, he, yeah, man, but the way he plays, man, like he's playing for, for himself, he wants to be a hero, and we don't care about that. We only care about win. Even if you try to cross the ball to Ronaldo and then becomes an own goal, yes, we won. But now mm. Rashford, man, Rashford is becoming a maybe becoming pink hero. And then Ronaldo, I still feel like there's no supply when it comes to Ronaldo. He is the key player at the end of the day. He he is our focal point. We need to, if we have good wingers who can cross the ball. Like Marcelo did when I was playing with Ronaldo in, in Madrid. Marcelo, mm-hmm. Cavallar, Isco, Modric. Those guys were passing Ronaldo. Even even Benzema, he ended up sacrificing his role to accommodate Ronaldo. Yeah. Why can't United players do that for Ronaldo? And that guy's no, a good but finish at the end of the day. You, you see, the problem with that, it's politics again, because right now, what we're doing, yeah. it, it doesn't make sense, you know. And I keep hearing these yeah. people within the fan base. They keep saying, hey, Ronaldo shouldn't be, uh, he shouldn't be up front, staying up front. You know, he should be coming into, getting more into the play. And I'm yeah, like, that's, that's not his game. That's yeah, not that's his push. game because you're taking away a huge part of his game by, mm. by, by forcing him to come into midfield. He's not a midfielder. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, He's not a you have to understand he's not Martial, mm. he's not these guys, you know, he's 37, bruh. You you want a 37-year-old yeah. 
coming into midfield, trying to start play and trying. This is why I think personally he's, he's finishing as 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 somewhat went down. That's that's why he's been missing chances because you have to understand yeah. how many how many runs does he make. You understand coming into midfield, then mm-hmm. he has he has to appear up front at the same time. That's not his game, and you can't expect the thirty-seven year old to be keeping up that the, the entire game. So yeah, true. Bro. I feel like he, he stopped playing his game. This is why he's flopping now. Like he stopped playing his game completely. We're trying to, we're trying this thing where we're saying no, there's no player who should be a focal point, and and it's costing us. Ah, it's costing us. How, how we, what are we going to do? Because the thing is, when he leaves, if he leaves and goes to PSG or someone like that, they will make him a focal point. They'll probably make, they'll probably try and create yeah. a combination where Messi is the one who's supplying him with, with, with um, you understand, with, 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 uh, yeah. with, with goals, obviously, and then assists. You understand? And people will be like, ah, oh, but, you know, he, he can only do it at PSG. No, the system is just crap. Every player, in yeah. this in the systems that we're trying to play well f- because this is not the system the the, the 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 you know this is the system that exposes more of their weaknesses than their strengths you know what sure. i'm saying so Vitu, yeah I- it's true because you know the reason real madrid won those back-to-back champions league and they dominated the european mm. football because the focal mm. point was ronaldo man. at the end of the day it was mm. ronaldo Ronaldo changed mm. everything in Real, in Real Madrid. But why a team like Manchester United couldn't do that? But we supposed to do that because, you know, Ronaldo, man, he delivers. Even if you cross, he's a complete forward. Yeah. Low ball, he scores. Long range, he scores. Free kicks, he scores. Corner kick is there. He's one of the good jumpers. So why, like, why do other people want Ronaldo to drop back? He shouldn't change his style of play. The reason we bought Ronaldo because we know how he plays. So we need to accommodate yeah. his style of play. Yeah. So I, right now, man, I feel like Manchester United, man, they, they're losing a lot of things. Like the philosophy there's, is no longer there. The structure mm. is no longer there. So, like, man, like we, like we, like we're destroying what Sir Alex Ferguson built. So yeah. that guy, you know, we, we, when it comes to midfield, we have one who's a defensive midfielder and the other one attacks. Yeah. So even if we play 4 4 2, we do have good midfielders who are box to box, like Scholes and Carrick. But now, mm. man, we have played McTominay and then, but we have good attacking players. Why couldn't <laughs> we just defend with one player? We just put McTominay or Fred, they'll defend, then Bruno and Bok, but they'll attack or Bruno or Van de Beek, but he's no longer there. We have good players, man, but I don't understand why we're still defending with one, with two midfielders. If one of the best are taking teams, man, Sancho, Rashford, Ronaldo, Cavani, mm-hmm. Bruno, Pogba, but you want to have to hold the midfield, it doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't make sense. And also, we used to, we used to believe in youth academy, but now, man, we don't have those youngsters anymore. So, like I'm saying, we we like we we losing what Felix say Alex Ferguson built because we used to promote a lot of players. Yeah, like we like even when we sign, we just sign a player that to improve our squad. But now we're yeah. signing every summer, man. Winter we're signing, summer we're signing. Like man, we don't even promote anymore. So yeah, I man, I think. I, but there's no way that Sir Alex Ferguson can come back. But we need someone who can get Manchester United, like go back to the roots. Because we believed in young stars. Like, pass, look at Barcelona, man. Barcelona, mm. they changed the coach. I don't know how many times they can change the coach. But yeah. they still believe in youth. They still promote young players. Yeah. Like, yeah, if, if you can check, there was this time Mourinho was supposed to coach Barca. But yeah. Mourinho wants to come up with his philosophy, so Barca didn't allow that. Even Madrid, mm-hmm. even when Mourinho went to Madrid, wanted Madrid to defend. Yeah. But the, the players ended up making a meeting that like now, more we are Real Madrid with the Galacticos, we can't pack the pass every time. We want to attack. Yeah. So yeah, we need those type of players because now maybe maybe we have those players who don't, who don't want to talk 
who are afraid of, who are afraid of talking so that's why this it ends up affecting like the club as a whole because man you need to talk like even the the time of Roy Keane Eric Cantona the players who mm-hmm. talk to the coach like, coach no we need to do this and this and we also need to have a coach that listens but right now, I feel like uh, everything is a chaos in, in Manchester. Like, yeah. everyone wants to do their own things. Uh, so, man, I, it's really frustrating, man. It's really frustrating because, man, man, our squad is good, man. From the keeper, we have good goal, two good goalkeepers, like Harrison, De Gea, two good right backs, one Bissaka, Dalot. Man, in mm. every position, we have good players, but we can't win. See, we like Chelsea, man. If you can check, we like Chelsea. We have good two center forwards. Ronaldo and Cavani. Yeah. We have Sancho, Greenwood. We have great players like Ilanga also, Bruno, Pogba, Lingard. But, man, I don't know what's going wrong with our team, man. I don't know. Man. So, this guy, the board or the coach, they need to have, they, they need to make a plan very quickly because, man, I, it's too much, man. Because if you check our starting lineup against Millie Sports, man. I feel like I just came winning five nil. <laughs> I feel like we're winning like five nil, but we end up losing. So uh, it doesn't make sense, man. So yeah, I I don't know that. what's going on there, man. But they need to speed up things. They need to come up with a better plan for us. Because we can't keep on losing. And our reputation, we're also losing our, our reputation on our side. Because now we are yeah. one of the best teams, but now man, it's getting worse every game. Man. Yeah, man, it's, 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 it's shocking, man. It's shocking on our side. And yeah, man, um, obviously um, we, 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 we covered everything. And, you know, from AFCON, from the Premier League, from to La Liga, to PSL today. So, you know, I'd like to thank you for coming. And once again, along with uh, Sims, along with Mami, and it was a very, very insightful show, you know. And yes, guys, uh, we we definitely gonna do this again some other time, you know, with the power panel. And yeah, man. Um, obviously, we drawing the, the 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 we're coming to the end of the show now. And obviously, I want to hear what 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 what's your prediction? Do you think we're making top four? Because I just wanna hear this before we close it. Do you think we're making top four or not? Sure, sure, bro. Uh, you know, the way I see it, man, we have to make a top four. <laughs> Dark or blue, we have to make a top four. We have to play in, in the Champions League. So, yeah, that mm-hmm. at least we can do for, like, as a United players and the coach, at least the best thing to do now is for to finish in top four so that you can play Champions League because we're already out in all the major tournaments. So, yeah, mm. you just need to get a top four or top three could be a bonus for us. Yeah, and thank you so much, yeah. man, for having me again. So, yeah. Thanks, bro. I mean, take care, man. Yeah, this is the list of football TV, guys, and we are officially signing out. Um, thank you for joining us, obviously, uh, for that very insightful show. And we probably... We're probably going to make this a traditional Monday sort of thing. And yeah, guys, uh, till next time, obviously, shout out to Celso, shout out to Sims, shout out to Mami once again. And we are officially signing out. Happy to be back home after 12 years. Good game, man. Really good game. Like I said to Martinelli. Hello, Antonio. Nice to see you again. Hello, good afternoon. It's gone through my fort. Rodri! Dieser Lewandowski-Auftritt sorgt für Wirbel. Looks like you lost the number one.